Williams, the deep man for North Carolina, and we're ready to go from Ernie Davis, Legends Field, at Syracuse, New York. Ratliff, a couple of yards deep, and that's where he is going to stay. So North Carolina will have the ball first. It's now time for the impact players brought to you by Food Line. Anthony Ratliff Williams, the junior wide receiver side on the kickoff there. 17 yards a catch. They would like to try to get the big guy the ball down the field. He's their deep threat. He leads the team in receiving yards. And defensively, the Food Line impact player for Syracuse, we picked out Kylan Whitner, leading tackler on this team. Trent moved up from safety a year ago to play linebacker behind their outstanding core of linebackers, Zaire Franklin and Paris Bent. He's learned and tutored into those two guys, and he leads them in tackles coming into the day. Nathan Elliott, the junior at quarterback, throws on his first opportunity. And that'll be a gain to Anthony Ratliff Williams. Completed pass for five yards. Yeah, both these teams want to work at a pace now. They want to try to exhaust their def the defense. So we see it a lot in college football now, but they would like to move as fast as they can. And once they get set, if they don't like the play they've got called, like this situation, Elliott looks to the sideline and he'll get a new play. North Carolina's one and four, one and two in conference play, and looking for their first road win of the season. Not a lot available right there for Michael Carter. In fact, it's a loss of one swallowed by the Orange defenders. Well, when you talk about Syracuse defensively now, they have been rung up in the running game. Now, you see Nathan Ellett's career high against Pitt, 313. That was a game we did. But what Syracuse is worried about is about stopping the run. They've had a tough time against the run the last two games. Now, coming off a bye, they feel like they're rested and ready to go. Syracuse so good on third down defense. They only allow 23% for the season, second in the conference, and third in all of the football bowl subdivision. Elliott making some changes. Third and six. Has a receiver complete Diami Brown and Diami Brown out near the 45 yard line will move the chains Bradshaw had to make the tackle 16 yards on the play. Brown going to come inside on the slant route man coverage excellent throw from Nathan Elliott and a good play on third down against this Roman of going you can only have pace Tom on offense if you move the chains excellent play there by Diami Brown that's his 10th catch of the year freshman from Charlotte North Carolina critical grab on third down. Where North Carolina has struggled this season. Antonio Williams, not a lot of running room, just a yard, right into Alton Robinson, the junior from Converse, Texas. Yeah, the big fella set the edge. We talked about these two guys, Robinson and Coleman. Coleman going to keep his outside shoulder free. He's going to turn Williams back to the inside. You see right there, coming over the top to make the, tie, the play, Cullen, the linebacker. Syracuse had a bye week last week. Robinson and Coleman, Dave documented their abilities on the edge to sack the opposing quarterback. Elliott. Pressure just got it away and it's incomplete. Number 21, Trill Williams trying to run down the quarterback, Nathan Elliott. Yeah, Wentz heated him up with pressure. You see they're going to come off that right side for Elliott, left side of the defense, and Trill Williams, the freshman, comes in and pressures Elliott off his spot where he has to throw the football away. Excellent job of dialing up the pressure, and the timing on the pressure was outstanding by Williams, the freshman. Third and long for North Carolina. On the season, just 32%, 13th in the ACC, although they did convert their first third down opportunity just a moment ago. Elliott steps forward, pass complete near midfield. Onto the orange side of the 50 to Antonio Williams might be a little bit short as Whitner made the tackle eight yards on the play. That's what you're trying to do in this deep zone. You drop eight off into coverage, make them throw the ball underneath. Williams takes the check down from Larry Fedora's team, and then Dino Baker's team comes up and makes the tackle, but it's close enough where Larry Fedora's going to roll the dice here early in the game. You see what North Carolina has done on fourth down this season. 54%. Williams the back. Fourth and short for North Carolina. Elliott forging forward inside the 45, and he's got enough for the first down. They convert on fourth down with a two-yard run. Well, showed a run formation, just kept the ball in the hands of Nathan Elliott, 215-pound quarterback. Gets a good push up front. And just did, just did get to the line. Our, our yellow line right on the money, just did get to the Brian Ward, defensive coordinator for the Syracuse Orange. Seeing his unit make some steady improvement this season. 
Although they did allow some big plays a couple of week, weeks ago in an overtime loss against Pittsburgh, five yards on the run by Carter. Well, Ryan Guthrie, the middle backer, going to be busy today. He's their third leading tackler, number 41. He had to come up and make the tackle on Carter. You're going to see Carter and Williams in this run game. They would like to get that cranked up. All teams want to run it, but North Carolina, with some of the struggles they've had at quarterback, would like to see their ground game rolling here. Tar Heels had 235 yards rushing a season high in a losing effort last Saturday against Virginia Tech 22 to 19. Ratliff Williams down the sideline and shoved out of bounds near the 20. Cordy had to shove him out. First down, North Carolina. Boy, excellent move by Ratliff Williams. This play is well defended. Look how many orange jerseys are out there. A tremendous move to get Cullen to bite on the inside, and then Ratliff Williams steps out of that tackle and puts it up the field close to the red zone. 19 yards on the play. Elliott to Ratliff Williams, the junior from Matthews, North Carolina, and Butler High School. This one near the 10-yard line, complete to Corrales. He takes a couple of orange George jerseys to move him out of bounds. Frederick there for Syracuse. A good route there, man coverage on the outside. Did a good job of pushing up the field with Corrales. Here's our red zone brought to you by CPI Security, the official security partner of the ACC. This is an area North Carolina has really struggled in this year. Just 42% touchdown. You'd like to be it up in that, you'd like to have it up in that 60-65 range. 19 trips, only eight touchdowns on the year. Daz Newsom will take it in for North Carolina. Opening drive, and the Tar Heels are in the end zone. Daz Newsom, that space player that plays the slot with great speed, had some moments a week ago that he'd like to remember and some that he'd like to forget against Virginia Tech. Dropped a touchdown last week. He doesn't drop this one. Little toss to the inside, and Newsom's in the end zone, untouched against the Orange, and an impressive opening drive by the Tar Heels. Newsom has his first touchdown of the season. Talking about tempo, and how do you establish it? You take all-time homecoming for Syracuse University. Tom, a lot going on up here for homecoming. It's a lot of fun to be around. It. Quite a weekend here on the campus. It's great to be back, and North Carolina throws the first punch in this one. This is Riley on the return. Riley up past the 20-yard line. 17 yards on the return for Sean Riley. Time for our food line impact players, the Orange on offense. Well, you saw Riley there on the return. You see what his punt return numbers are. Averaging 25 yards return, has a touchdown there, and he is their leading receiver in receptions. He'll be in the slot. And defensively, KJ or J.K. Britt will play at the safety spot. This is a guy that's done an outstanding job of playing the middle and had 10 tackles against Virginia Tech a week ago. Also an interception on the season for J.K. Britt, the senior from Noonan, Georgia, first and 10. Mo Neal is the back, right up the middle from Mo Neal to the 30-yard line, and the chains are moving. First down for Neal, 10 yards on the run. Yeah, coming straight ahead. This is something that Syracuse has featured more and more as, as uh, Dino Babers' tenure has moved on, as they want to run the football. Everybody thinks they want to sling it around or Sean Riley on the reception, but uh, they want to run the ball here under Dino. He wants to get that power running game going. That facilitates all the passing game. Third year head coach Dino Babers, 12 and 18. On the sidelines for the Orange. They swing it out to Johnson down the sideline. Nikeem Johnson down near the 30. Forced out by Miles Thorne. 34 yards on the play for the Orange. Great block on the outside right there by Harris. He gets just enough of the corner to get Johnson down the sideline. And now Syracuse can get in their quickness. When you start talking about opening drives for Syracuse, they've been unbelievable. Four touchdowns in six games, one field goal. Five of six times they've been able to put points on the board. Eric Dungy averaging just over 200 yards passing per game, sixth in the ACC, and he completes 60% of his passes. That one on target to Ikeem Johnson. Dungy has the time. Looking down inside the five and a twisting Jamal Custis. Could not adjust to the ball, and there is no flag on the play. Now, just a poor throw that time by Dungy. Custis, the big receiver, gets on top of the corner and has a chance to be thrown to the back line. But he threw the ball behind him. Nine 300-yard games on the year. He has not thrown for 300 yards this year. 
been running the football. Had 200 yards rushing on the opening day for Syracuse running the ball. Holds or shares 14 school records. This is Mo Neal breaking a couple of tackles. And down here at the 25-yard line as we go down to Larisha. Well, guys, Mo Neal actually visited UNC six to seven times because he is the only player on the Syracuse roster from North Carolina. So he went there, never received an offer, but did receive offers from other North Carolina schools. So as a result of not being offered at UNC, he's pretty pumped up and ready to go for today. Yeah, it sounded like he had a little bit of a chip on his shoulders. First time he's had a chance to see North Carolina. These two teams have not played each other since Syracuse entered the ACC back in 13. Got to go all the way back, what, Tom, to 03? 03, Davey, right? That pass is too far from Mo Neal, the junior from Gastonia. Boy, they had it, North set Carolina. Up. had it set up, Tom. Neal open in the left flat. Something North Carolina did not have covered, but look at Neal. Nobody's there. Two defenders running off with the receivers, and Neal's going to catch that, and he may still be running, and he caught that one. Boy, blown opportunity right there. Dungey missed two throws in that drive that potentially were touchdowns. See Dino Babers having a visit with his outstanding quarterback. This will be a 44-yard attempt for Andre Schmidt, the redshirt freshman. He is 16 of 17 on field goal attempts this season. Tops in the ACC. From 44 yards away, it's no good. Just his second miss of the season had made 11 in a row as the alumni return to campus and the Hall of Languages on the Syracuse University campus. Time for our Carolina Ford dealers keys to the game with Dave Archer. Yeah, North Carolina got to find a way to finish games. They've had opportunities to finish some teams off being outscored 41 to 17 in the fourth quarter. And for Syracuse, they've got to prevent the big play. This is more points towards their defense. Talking to Dino Babers, he feels like if they can eliminate or damage control the big plays down the field for their defense, they have a chance to win in every game. Win every game. So North Carolina with its quarterback Nathan Elliott, six of seven for 70 yards on an opening drive, which ended in a touchdown from Newsom. This is Antonio Williams. Dave, how about North Carolina on their last 28 drives? Prior to today, just two touchdowns and five field goals on their first possession today. Larry Fedora's team takes it to the end zone. Yeah, big third down conversion, a fourth down conversion in that drive. So a lot of resolve for the heels to put the ball in the end zone on their opening drive to start the game. 11 plays, 75 yards, and just a few seconds short of five minutes on that opening drive for North Carolina. Williams again, no gain to the 30. Let's take a look at that first drive. This was the throw on third down. Williams got close, and then Elliott pounded it forward for the first down. Excellent move by Ratliff Williams to push it down near the 20, and then a little play to Daz Newsom to push it in the end zone. Really efficient get after it drive. 11 plays, 75 yards. Third and six for North Carolina. About to cross the seven minute threshold of the first quarter. One of two on third down in the early going. Elliott the deep drop his pass over the middle it's caught near the 40 and a first down for the Tar Heels it's the tight end Carl Tucker Carl Tucker coming off a monster game a week ago two catches over 100 yards outstanding catcher and how about the throw by Elliott off his back foot under pressure to find his big tight end they got 10 yards on that play Armstrong brought the pressure but the patience from Nathan Elliott good after a throw falling away The run for the Tar Heels is Carter, dragged down just beyond the 40. And we go down to Larisha. More on Carl Tucker. Well, we spoke to head coach Larry Fedora earlier this week, and he told us that the junior tight end is the unsung hero that no one ever talks about, but he consistently makes plays. Coach told us that he does well at blocking on the perimeter and at the point of attack. 6'2", 255, only had five catches before that catch you just saw on third down. Just a six catch on the year, but had a big day against Virginia Tech a week ago. Yeah, he had an 80-yard TD reception in that game in the fourth quarter. Ball Although start. there is now. Offense, number 85. Five-yard penalty, second down. Now, these are the kind of mistakes you can't make, and you see immediately Larry Fedora going to sub in for Roscoe Johnson. He's going to leave. Corrales is going to come in. You can't move as a wide receiver on the edge. You're supposed to be watching the ball anyway. So just a mistake that now makes you second and 15 as opposed to being in that second and agreeable situation if you will as a play call 
Elliott play fake. Floats it too far for Bo Corrales. Lunging for that one. Frederick trying to stay step for step with Corrales. I like the challenge because up close, Frederick's playing bump and run on the outside, so they're going to take a shot and just beyond Corrales' reach. And Frederick got up hobbling a little bit at the corner and still is after that play. So if you're looking at it, and they're going to get Frederick out of the game, he's actually going to pump out of the game. Third and 14 for North Carolina. Handoff is Williams. Runs into the orange roadblock near the 45-yard line. See, that's what happens, Tom, when you get a penalty or a negative play. Defense now can go into a zone, and you run the football and throw the ball underneath, you're going to come up and make the tackle. Syracuse did that extremely well right there. Forced them to lay the ball off, or in that place, in that case, run the football with Williams, and they rally up to make the tackle, and they're going to get off the field. Hunter Lent will be the punter. Riley is the deep man for Syracuse. He stands at his 19-yard line. 7-0 North Carolina scored on their opening drive. Riley wants the fair catch in the backtrack to the 12 and makes it successfully. A punt from Lent of 43 yards. We'll take a timeout and be back. Last or started five games, 189 yards total offense. See the freshman Kate Fort, who really played well prior to the injury a week ago against Virginia Tech and Chaz Surratt, who had was suspended early in the year, came back to play in just one game and then was injured. So you can see what uh, Chris Kapilovic has had to deal with. The offensive coordinator for North Carolina, different guys in the at the helm really makes it tough to call plays sometimes. Second down, Michael Carter. Russian game for Carolina. And now just over a minute and a half to go in the first quarter. There is no gain. McKinley Williams on the stop. We talk about guys that have played a lot of games here. McKinley Williams, this is 34th, 31st game as one of the Orange on defense. Another third down conversion situation for North Carolina. Two for four on third down in the game for the Tar Heels. Showing man coverage across the board. Third and two for Elliott. Rolls it left, throws near the 30, and a first down for North Carolina, and it's Daz Newsom again. Well, I love the call, though, Tom. They, anticipating pressure was North Carolina, so they're going to move Elliott out of the pocket. Newsom's in the slot. You see him in the slot here, going to run the out route. Just a quick throw to the outside by Elliott. Elliott playing the high level right now. He's really made some really key throws against the Blitz. And then a nice job on the perimeter there to make the throw in the slot. Here's our first and ten line brought to you by Lending Tree, official loan shopping partner of the ACC. Elliott, that pass too high, looking for Rontavius Groves, number four. Run pass option, tried to fake the run and throw the slant in behind. He's too tall, it was Elliott. So far in this game, they needed Nathan Elliott to play at a high level throwing the football, which is going to help facilitate their run game. Chris Kapilovic, the offensive coordinator for North Carolina, got everything at his disposal right now. He talked to us earlier in the week and talked about how they've had opportunities. They just missed them, whether it's a missed throw or land the ball on the ground. They need to finish these drives. Second and 10, just 33 seconds on the clock in the first quarter. Jordan Brown forced backward for a loss. Ryan Guthrie running him down. 41 in orange. It's a loss of 10 on the play for the Tar Heels. Now and give Kendall Coleman, one of those big edge rushers, the credit. He's the guy that shuts the door on the outside. Big number 55. Going to get leverage to the outside. Set the edge in the run game. Turns Brown back to the inside. And that's where all his help's coming from. And that's where Guthrie makes the tackle. And that will be the final play of the first quarter. So when we come back, it'll be third down for North Carolina, which leads 7-0. First meeting as ACC opponents, North Carolina and Syracuse. Here's multi-million dollar refurbishment and improvements here at the Dome, including a permanent roof, vertically hung scoreboard, air conditioning, and other amenities. Next play of the drive. Ratliff Williams. 
short of the 30 yard line down at the 32 that was third and long for North Carolina again what Syracuse is going to do they made it made it very clear that on third and long they're going to make it a eight man drop scenario where you're going to try to fit the ball in a hole or drop it off short at the time Nathan Elliott chose to drop it off and, and try to provide a field goal opportunity but Syracuse defending that back in with eight defenders. This will be Freeman Jones on the field goal attempt. 50 yards for Freeman Jones. Has not attempted a field goal of 50 or more yards, and this one is no good. We well, had more than enough leg on it. Davies now 11 of 16 on the season. As Jones misses the field goal attempt from 50. Weekend, they are our hosts for a homecoming as we take a look at the Hall of languages. I might have had a few classes in their day, in my day, back in the late 80s, early 90s. I was just, just, just disappointed that you weren't the Grand Marshal for the parade. <laughs> oh, that honor hopefully is forthcoming at some point. For the moment right now, Syracuse has the ball but has not possessed it all that often. Right up the middle, oh. Moneal. Watch out for the official across midfield, and it's Moneal stepping out of bounds at the 43-yard line. J.K. Britt ran him down, 24 yards on the play. Yeah, watch Moneal's head. He's going to look to the outside for a defender and doesn't see the official. And the official, he bounces off the official. I'm not sure that he was going to go all the way, but certainly kept him from going very far after the collision. Danny Worrell, our umpire. Luckily, up and fine after that contact from Mo Neal. Custis on the previous play for six for the Orange. They go up tempo, as they often do. That pass complete, 25-yard line. Nikeem Johnson, but there is a flag on the play. Yeah, you're going to get uh, J.K. Britt with a hold. He grabs the slot receiver on this play, and, and subsequently, Dungy throws it to the outside. Defense, number 29. The senior penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Our first quarter stats brought to you by the North Carolina Education Lottery, celebrating 12 years, over $5.8 billion raised for education. To learn more, visit nclottery.com. See that first quarter, just two first downs for Syracuse. That reflects why they haven't had the ball very long. They want to play at pace. They haven't been able to convert to stay on the field. Excellent throw by Dungey there after his slot receiver was held. He threw the ball to the outside, and now they're threatening here against North Carolina. Coach Babers told us they want to snap it about every 20 seconds. Get 80 plays in the game. Those are the targets. There's Dungey on the run to the 15. A design run for Eric Dungey. Mo Neal leading through the hole. Much like an I-formation play with a tailback. Dungey close to 1,700 career rushing yards. Second in school history, Dave, for quarterbacks. Now, Dungey, see, when you get down here close, the reason... Turkey's been able to put it in a lot is because the quarterback can run. Dungy's pass deflected away at the 10 and a flag comes out. He was looking for Devin Butler, number five. Greg Ross was defending. Well, they've got some, they're banged up in the secondary, Tom, for North Carolina. Both their starting corners, Sales and Cotman, are out. And Ross has drawn the start at corner, and he gets a flag there. Just so tough for the corner to defend the slam. Defense, number 35. The ball was placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Once you get inside leverage, if you're the receiver on the corner, the corner's almost just got to reside himself to make the tackle as opposed to try to come over the top to bat the ball down. Syracuse offensively red zone wise, not great. 22 touchdowns. Now they've been down there a ton, but a lot of field goals. Had to settle for a lot of field goals down here. Another part that Dino Babers would like to shore up is find a way to score touchdowns. The rate of 89% scoring is third best to the ACC, but again, the emphasis on six points as opposed to the field goals. Going up the middle now with Mo Neal, dragged to the turf inside the 10-yard line for Mo Neal. He got four on the rush. And it's surprising that those numbers are the way they are for, for Syracuse in the red zone because the quarterback runs so well. You go back not too long ago to North Carolina when Marquise Williams was a quarterback in North Carolina. They were outstanding in the red zone because of his, his ability to run it. That's what Dungy brings to the table here. Seven rushing touchdowns on the season for Dungy leads the team. Ball's on the turf. Dungy had to recover and fall on that. 
And that's going to be a loss of three, trying to give it to Mo Neal. Nice play by Tyler Powell, though. Tyler Powell, number 95, burst through the line. He's able to get around the legs of Mo Neal and kind of disrupted the handoff there. Good penetration by the big senior. So now it's third and eight for the Orange. 0 for 2 on third down of the game. You can see the turnover margin. Syracuse has been outstanding. North Carolina has had a tough time taking the ball away and have turned the ball over way too much. Best in the ACC and 13th in the ACC for North Carolina. And sometimes we'll tell the tale on what your record is. Dungey's tucking it. Puts the shoulder down. And then runs into three and four white shirts led by Cole Holcomb, the senior. Linebacker for North Carolina, Dungey on the run. Well, this is a North Carolina defense that had struggled down here to keep people out of the end zone. 13 touchdowns on 17 trips, but good job of defending the run. Talking about the quarterback run down here, a designed run again for Dungey. And North Carolina knows that the number one, there's John Papuchas, defensive coordinator for North Carolina. Did an excellent job of taking away the quarterback and making him try to throw it for a touchdown. The walk-on kicker who earned a scholarship, Andre Schmidt, 0 for 1, missed from 44 yards away in the first quarter, but this one is good from 25 yards away, and the Orange getting on. Syracuse is on the board. Schmidt with the field goal from 25 yards away, 7-3, North Carolina. Anthony Ratliff Williams watches that one sail into the end zone. Here's our first Citizens Bank forever first. The first and only national title for the Orange Dave came back in 1959. 11-0 on the season. The head coach, the legendary Ben Schwartzwalder. Yeah, and he's immortalized here as well. And... Defensively, Dave, they gave up 193 yards rushing all season and beat Texas in the Cotton Bowl 23-14 for the national title. Five All-Americans on the team, including sophomore Ernie Davis, who would go on to win the Heisman Trophy. Pass completed to 30, Ratliff Williams. So much tradition and history. Intertwined with Syracuse football. Good, good rhythm throw here for Elliott. Zone coverage, this is a zone buster. Ratliff Williams finds that little hole in between the linebacker and the corner, back in the flat. Good read by Elliott, get the ball out on time. Elliott over 2,000 yards passing in his career now. Fourth catch by Ratliff Williams back to the ground and Jordan Brown the junior from Durham North Carolina and Southern Durham High School. For the most part so far Syracuse has really done a nice job against the run game. See Nathan Elliott over 2,000 now passing as Tom just mentioned. Evan Foster the safety came up and made the play against the run game and so they forced another third down here. Elliott had his career high against Pittsburgh, 313 yards passing, now third and short. Elliott with the time to deliver past the 35. Anthony Ratliff Williams with his fifth catch of the game. Four yards, and the chains are rolling for North Carolina. Oh, a good read by Ratliff Williams. He understood it was zone coverage. Watch it. Zone coverage is going to drop off. Ratliff Williams is going to find that hole. Send it down for your quarterback. Give him your numbers and let Nathan Elliott put the ball on you. That's a veteran receiver and a quarterback that's played enough now for North Carolina. Understand moving the chains is what we're all about. If you want to get tempo going, nice job by those two to push it ahead. Running on first down with Williams pulled down at the 35 yard line. Cullen, the linebacker, Tom comes across and makes the play. Number 24 going to run through. A little bit of a zone read here. Elliott's going to hand it off, and Cullen runs him down from behind for no gain. Actually, minus about a half a yard for Larry Fedora's team. Here's our first and 10 line. It is brought to you by Lending Tree, official loan shopping partner of the ACC. Second and 11 for North Carolina. 8.51 and counting in the second quarter. Elliott got it away up to the 45 yard line. Antoine Green, the freshman for 10 yards. Oh, look at the window that Elliott's going to throw this in. Not going to get a good perspective from this spot, but a good job by the freshman to work back to the football. Man coverage, excellent job by Antoine Green to come back and get the football. But boy, threw it through an eye of a needle, did Nathan Elliott right there with pressure coming. 
He's been impressive, Tom, today when they've tried to heat him up with pressure. Third and short. Four of eight on third down for North Carolina. This is Williams. Needed to get past that 46 yard line, and he's got just enough with a two yard gain. And another first down for North Carolina. You know what Carolina's doing a nice job of is they're keeping themselves, Tom, in some manageable third downs. This is a Syracuse defense that came in number three in the country in surrendering third down conversions. Just 23% of the time are people converting against this defense. But right now, what, five of nine on third down? Doing a good job of staying in those manageable third down situations. First down for the Tar Heels. Elliott looks back the other way. Near the 30-yard line, and it is caught Green. What a grab by Green as he beat Cordy. Well, when you're if you're Larry Fedora, this is the guy you dreamed of playing quarterback. Nathan Elliott is lighting it up. Now, did he go out of bounds before he caught the football? But I think they're gonna say he was forced out, which allows him to come back in. That was the little conversation the officials had. And an excellent catch by the freshman along the Syracuse sideline. 23 yards on the grab by Green. This is Brown. Can't get away inside the 32 yards, and we're going to Charlotte. Let's head back to Durham, Tom, where Virginia just keeps piling it on, Coach. Uh, it just gives defensive coordinators a headache. All the receivers are covered. Bryce Perkins tucks it under and scores. A three-yard run, his second so far on the day. The who's up 14 nothing. Wow, we saw that Duke defense a week ago against Georgia Tech shut the door on the Jackets. They're having a tough time with Bryce Perkins. Michael Carter right side. Kylan Whitner leading the way for the Orange. Just the yard for Michael Carter. Okay, now you're in a third, what would be defined as third and long here. A long eight or a short eight, long seven. So now let's see if Syracuse is willing to come with their pressure. They have some good pressure packages. North Carolina has done an outstanding job of picking up that pressure and giving Nathan Elliott an opportunity to throw one-on-one -on -one with the receivers on the outside. They're showing a zone coverage look. It is zone. Elliott. Carter. Makes a move at the 22, trying to get to that 20. That's where he needed to get for the first down. Might be a little bit short of it. I'll tell him it's zone coverage, but what has to happen is Andre Sisko, had, or I'm sorry, Bruce Scoop Bradshaw has to make that tackle. He does not. We talked about it in the opening. Carter out in space is a nightmare, and he gets it close enough to where Larry Fedora is considering going for it right here. Michael Carter in space, really tough to handle, and he showed it right there. Fourth and one, North Carolina, two for two in this situation today. Elliott hangs on to it. Near the 21-yard line. Did he come up short? Needed to get near that 20. Yes, he did. Syracuse will take over on downs. And for the first time today, North Carolina denied on fourth down. Coleman and Slayton are the two guys going to make the play on the zone read. They step in and get the quarterback on the ground. Excellent job by those two defenders staying at home. Remember, when you're at option-type football, you've got to take care of responsibility. Slayton and Coleman did it. Well, needing a big stop, Syracuse gets one. They turn to Coleman for a big play. Back after a local homecoming inside the dome. Syracuse trailing North Carolina 7-3. They've got the football. First and 10 with 5.44 to go in the second quarter. Well, big stop for, stop for Syracuse defensively. Larry Fedora foregoing the field goal to go for it on fourth down. Our first and 10 line brought to you by Lending Tree, official loan shopping partner of the ACC, and that's going to be Mo Neal. See both these teams probing. Every, both teams are probing with their run game. Trying to set up potential play action shots over the top. This is a Syracuse team that wants to run it, but then play action and take big shots down the field. Dungy looking. Long pass. Into coverage. Flag is out. Well, it looked like to me that the Carolina defender was in position, Miles Dorn, and that he was pushed by the wide receiver on the outside. It's Devin, Devin Butler, Butler yeah, yeah. number five. See who they're going to call us against North Carolina or certainly look like it may be Syracuse. Pass interference. Offense, number five. 
15 yard penalty. Excuse me, penalty half position to the ball. Second down. Yeah, Miles Dorn is in perfect position as the half safety. See, so look at Dorn. He's going to get over here, and then he's going to look back for the ball, and then he's just thrown to the ground by Butler. So, pretty good positioning there by Dorn. You can see it's out, definitely offensive pass interference. It's a good play by Miles Dorn to get where he needed to be. He knew he was allotted his spot on the field and then located the ball. And Butler shoves him to the ground. First penalty against the Orange this afternoon with 5.16 to go in the second quarter. Dungy backing up inside his own five. Dungy has to extend the play and then throw it out of bounds. Boy, excellent job in the back end by North Carolina to take away all the throws for Dungy. Initially, Dungy has some time, but now things start to deteriorate, and there's just no place to throw it because of how well North Carolina did on the back end of taking away those throws. Nothing easy coming for Eric Dungy so far today. Syracuse 0 for 3 on third down in the game, and Dungy just 4 of 9 passing for 58 yards. Wants to try it again. Dungy looking for Custis. And it's incomplete. Boy, forcing you, uh, forcing South, uh, Syracuse, I'm sorry, Syracuse into some really uncomfortable third down situations. It was four for 10 on the day. But the major penalty, the pass interference calls, got them behind the chains and just had no answer to try to get themselves in position for a manageable third down. So Hoffrichter, a few yards deep in his own end zone, will punt it to Daz Newsom, standing at the 42 of North Carolina. We're going to take a look at this play. Incomplete pass. The previous play is under review. So it was Custis near the boundary, Dave. They ruled it out of bounds and incomplete, but Trey Blake says the play will be under review. we take a look at it. looked like maybe the left foot for Custis to see if he, the 6'5 wide receiver, was able to get that foot down. Ooh, that, man, that's close whether the toe is still on the ground. Does he bobble the football, Tom, at the top here? Foot is down, ball. Let's see if we get toe and ball at the same time. Let's see if we can freeze it, guys, right there. Yeah, so it looks like toe's on the ground. Is he secure? If he doesn't bobble the football, let's take a look at the back end of the catch now as he goes out of bounds. Let it go, guys. Let it run. Toe's definitely on the ground. Let's look at his, his hands. We don't see his hands there. You can see if the ball is bobbled as he stepped because he's certainly got the feet down. There's no bobble. The ball's a completion. That should be that should be out. To review the ruling on the field stands. <laughs> sure it does. Of course it does. So you need it, Dave. Indisputable yeah, video yeah, evidence to overturn it. the I call, right there. which was incomplete. Yeah. They did not see it. I did. According to the review, so it will be a punt. Again, only 18 yards of punt return yardage against Hoffrichter all season. And Newsom is back to receive the punt from his own 41-yard line. Scrapes the roof of the dome with this one. Newsom backtracking at the 30. Wants a return oh. and won't make it. Cullen, special teams, flag on the play. 58-yard punt. Holding. Receiving team number 48. The 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick, the first down. Two coaches looking for their teams to respond from recent losses. Dino Baber. It is 7-3. Dave, just the fifth all-time meeting between the teams. And the anomaly is the visitors have won every time yeah, they've it's, met. It's crazy when you go back and look at it, though. You go to back 3 for the last one, which was a 49, what, 49-42 game in triple overtime, something like that. So these two teams have not met for a long time. North Carolina with the football. Ratliff Williams on the edge and not a lot available for number 17. Thanks to Evan Foster. Kind of a here at all time extension of the run game is the screen game to the perimeter. Try to get this Syracuse defense running. Well, it's one of the things they do extremely well. A nice play there. Tackle for loss. North Carolina, as we mentioned, has won the two previous meetings at the Dome, 1996 and 2002, will win 30 to 22 most recently. This is the first time they meet as ACC opponents. Second and 11. 
And try the other side with Carter. He gets tripped up near the 20. Ryan Guthrie made the play. It's only three. Dave, time for Know Your Score. It's brought to you by Lending Tree. We go around the ACC. Well, you heard the updates from the guys back in uh, Charlotte, Virginia, getting eye after Duke. Later on, Wake Forest goes down to Florida State. They haven't scored a touchdown, Tom, since Riley Skinner was the quarterback in 2006 in a huge game in the Atlantic. Everything on the line for the Wolfpack and the Tigers. Tigers have won six in a row in that series. They're both undefeated. Here it's North Carolina. Five of ten on third down. Third and eight. Elliott's out to Williams, and it gets taken down at the 22. There is no gain. Andrew Armstrong on the play. Again, success on first down for Syracuse defensively. Forces North Carolina behind the chains. Now it's uncomfortable, and Syracuse can play that coverage. They play zone, rally up, make the tackle. They run so well, and North Carolina now going to have to wait because Dino Babers six to go <laughs> in the second quarter. And they're ready for homecoming, Dave, as they come inside the dome. They haven't been here since well, about a month ago in a win against UConn. So it's been a while since they've seen their orange. Hunter Lent will punt it from his own seven-yard line. Sean Riley, you saw the deep man at his 38-and-a-half yard line, ready for the punt from Lent. A big play guy with an opportunity to create a short field for Syracuse offensively. Riley, very dangerous. 69-yard punt return touchdown in that game against UConn, the last home game for the Orange. This is a poor punt. This one ends up in the seats. Lent did not catch that one the way he wanted. Well, and it's because of Riley, and this ball going to come all the way back down to the North Carolina 32-yard line. Just right off the watch, he point the nose down. Noise down is going to try to get a little pooch kick up in the air, so Riley can't get the return. And boy, he caught that off the side of his foot. Dave, just a 10-yard punt from Lent. Now let's test your knowledge with today's Aflac game trivia. Here's the question. Who made their debut quarterback in the first meeting between North Carolina and Syracuse? Back with the answer in just a moment. The first meeting was back in 1995. This is going to be Strickland. So Carolina, this is the number one scoring offense in the ACC, averaging almost 44 points a game. But North Carolina has come in here with a real plan to take away the run game. Hugging up outside, look up here. Hugging up right up here, up tight right here, trying to take away the easy throws. Take away the run game. Dungey's pass near the 20. That's complete. Taj Harris near the 15-yard line. Prior to that play, Dave, just 120 yards of total offense for the Q's. Well, that's a good route on the outside. Patrice Rene is going to try to defend to the inside. See, excellent retrace route. Goes to the inside, retraces the steps to the outside. It's a good separator against the man coverage and a good throw by Dungey. Strickland trying to earn the 10 yard line. Senior from Dayton, New Jersey, got five on the rush. Now remember, this is something that Syracuse has done all year is move the football down into the red zone, but they've really struggled to finish with touchdowns. This is this is where Dungey becomes effective down here. I mentioned this earlier that red zone, they've been pretty Pretty porous, but not today so far. Dungey's pass near the goal line. Jamal Custis has it for a touchdown. There is a flag out. An incredible catch from Custis, but again, a penalty marker on the play. Now, only the six foot five wide receiver comes up with this EPI against North Carolina. Very similar route. That Ross had been flagged on earlier on the slant route, but look where the ball's thrown here to the inside. Six foot five, Jamal Custis reaches out and makes the grab. It's a big time catch by a big receiver, the senior, in a in a huge moment, really struggling to get the ball in the end zone. Custis comes up with a big catch. Fourth TD catch of the season for Custis, and now Coach Fedora's team, just like that, trailing 9-7, pending the extra point. Now we're going to take a look at this one too, Tom. If it does stand for Dungey, it will be his 11th TD pass of the season. See where Custis' knee is when he catches the football because he certainly is going to the ground. 
you can take a look at it here. So again, the play is under review. We need indisputable video evidence to overturn the call. It's touchdown on the field. Right, let's check out where the knee comes down as he catches the ball. And you're not going to be able to see anything from that angle. Does the ball break the plane as the knee comes down? Well, you're in the not, right hand. They're not going to turn that over from that angle. They're not going to see anything there. They won't turn that over. They didn't turn over the custom sketch before. Here you go. Ooh, he's short. He's short, about a football short of the goal line. Great shot right there. Exceptional work by our technical crew on the review. Now I'm 0 for 1 now on the whole. Hey, I wasn't going to bring that no up. Catch thing. I was not going to bring ironic, that up. Ironically, same guy. Yeah, there's there's still over a billion in the lottery now because I didn't win last night either. So <laughs> you told me you were going to win that day, and that I'd have to do the game by myself today had that happened. <laughs> Again, the play is under review. Yeah, Jamal I, Custis. I'm expecting this ball to be marked at the about the one foot line. Custis makes a heck of a catch, though, and it would be first and goal. It was a great throw and catch. The combination by both to get it down to the goal line. Yeah, I think the throw is to the inside. The error throw is to the inside. The play is Custis laying out to make the catch, and then obviously the quarterback trusting. If the 6 5 wide receiver is going to go get it for you. That's a pretty good receivers here in the past, huh? A couple of years ago, we saw Amba Etatawo big time break player. some school records in just one year in an orange uniform. Steve Ishmael last year. After review, the runner's knee was down prior to crossing the goal line. It would be Syracuse's ball, first and goal at the half yard line. Please reset the game clock to 2 05. Don't forget Irvin Phillips part of that group too last year Dave yeah, again the play now overturned short of the goal line two record setting in fact those are the top two in Syracuse history and receiving Phillips and Ishmael 194 combined receptions an ACC record. Yeah. record. Dave. All right this is you got to turn it's first down so you might be willing to turn around and hand the ball off. It's Howard in at halfback he scored two touchdowns a week ago two weeks ago. To the goal line. <laughs> and there's the indication touchdown orange. Well, you get a little of the Reggie Bush push here from Eric Dungey. He's going to fall back in and shove on his fullback. Watch Dungey number two. He says, wait a minute, you need a little help there, big fella. Let me help you out. Chris Elmore, six feet, 282 pounds across the goal line, and Dungey with a small celebration. As the Orange take it to the end zone, they get it down right to the goal line on the play to Custis, where Dungey completed the pass, and they finish it off with the run by Chris Elmore. Well, you got to look at the short punt or the shank punt as a turnover for North Carolina. Got the opportunity to scrimmage from the 32-yard line of North Carolina, and this time Syracuse cashes it in with the Elmore touchdown run. Schmidt the extra point. 156 to go in our second quarter, and Syracuse has taken the lead. And we're going back to Charlotte to see what's coming up at halftime with Tommy and Katie. Well, Tom and Dave, don't worry. Coach in here is 0 for 2 on official reviews also. <laughs> but coming up at the half, we're going to talk about the other ACC game in action, Duke and Virginia, Coach. Uh, what about the Virginia defense right now holding Duke late in the second quarter, 57 total yards, three first downs, one interception. We came in talking about the Duke defense, but being outplayed by the Virginia yeah, defense. You mentioned that interception. They just came up with that in the end zone. So, so much to talk about. Stick it. Keep it right here, guys. Back to you. Well, I can't wait to hear Coach break down what the Wolf Pack and the, and the Tigers need to do to win that game. Make sure you stay glued right here for the halftime show. And then he's going to have to come up with some ways for Duke to move the football. A lot for the coach to do at halftime. He's prepared for the task at hand. Anthony Ratliff Williams to return the kickoff from Sterling Hoffrichter. The Orange out in front 10 7. They've outscored their opponents by 94 points in the first half this season. There will be no return. All right, once again, our AFLAC game trivia. Here's the question once again Who made their debut at quarterback in the first meeting between North Carolina and Syracuse? You've been chewing on this. The answer is Donovan McNabb, the redshirt freshman. 
1995, Syracuse won 20 to 9. He was the starting quarterback assigned by Paul Pasqualoni just hours before the game. Over 8,000 yards passing, 77 touchdowns, 19 rushing touchdowns. Of it's a member, you see the retired number of Donna McNabb. Ended up being a six time Pro Bowler, the Philadelphia Eagles. Elliott's pass, complete to Williams. Cordy forces him out, 150 on the clock, six yards on the play. Something you work on all the time, and really you would argue that these two offenses are in two-minute offense all the time, right? This is going to be right in the wheelhouse of Larry Fedora's offense. Nathan Elliott, the junior, running the show. He has had an outstanding first half, albeit they haven't gotten the points out of it. I think he's done a nice job of directing traffic at quarterback for North Carolina. Over the middle and incomplete. Uh, Corrales makes a mistake here. It's it's very similar to the route that Ratliff Williams caught earlier in the game. It's a zone play. Now what, Elliott's going to get heated up with pressure, but he throws the ball in the hole where Corrales is supposed to be. And there's one of those big fire breathers we talk about. Alton Robinson, six sacks from that defensive end spot. Twenty completions in the first half for Elliott on 24 attempts. Now third and four. 146 on the clock in the dome. 5 of 11 on third down in the game for North Carolina. Elliott sails this one, and that's too far. Uh, it's a bad read by Nathan Elliott. What Syracuse shows is man coverage on the outside and then bailed out into zone. He thought he was going to get that throw. Take a look at this now. See, the corner bails out right down here, so it's zone coverage, and they take away that throw and that throw. No place to throw the football. Excellent job at Syracuse to disguising man coverage and then bluffing and falling off into zone and taking away all the throws. Lent to punt. Number 82, Nikeem Johnson is back to receive near the 25-yard line. The last punt from Lent went only 10 yards. Johnson wants a fair catch and makes it. 41 yards on the punt from Lent. Let's head down to Larisha for Gatorade hurt around the cooler. Well, guys, I talked to Eric Dungey, and he's one tough kid. He told me that he's an adrenaline junkie. When he was younger, he would actually tell his mom, oh, I'm going to the mall, but he really didn't go to the mall. He would go to the river or go to a cliff and jump off a 40-foot <laughs> barrel. <laughs> yes, he would go jump off 40-foot barrel. So he's one adventurous guy. And his teammates think he's very crazy. Yeah, well, we've seen that in his play in, what, thir 32 games here as a Syracuse Orange quarterback. And Eric Dungey, as Tom's talked about, Climbing the ladder up into that upper echelon of, of guys that have thrown the football and run the football. Here's a quarterback. And it's a pretty good line. We just saw uh, Donovan McNabb, Don McPherson. They've had some good quarterbacks here. Ryan Nassib has done an outstanding job as well. So Dungy, but he he's one of those kind of guys, had he been able to play, and he'd been knocked out of some games, and he'd been to play his entire career. This might be the all-time greatest quarterback in Syracuse history, but he certainly a factor and have to defend against him. In a 30-second start in the orange uniform for Dungy. There was an unsportsmanlike penalty against the orange, which marched it back 15 yards from the Johnson fair catch. Up the middle, Strickland past the 20-yard line. Well, this is a this is a yellow light situation if you're Dino Babers, meaning you're going to be cautious here. You get the ball to start the second half, so you'd love to have a double dip, score, and then score to come out. Quick pass from Dungy. This is Riley. Up at the 25-yard line. It's a first down for Riley. Dorn on the play, four yards. Again, this is the way Syracuse operates anyway. It's kind of a two-minute pace anyway. Dungy's pass. Riley couldn't grab it. He was in stride, headed for midfield. They came back. This is a throw that they made to Johnson on the outside earlier in the game, but this time Riley gets clean down the seam. And boy, a perfect throw from Eric Dungy. Second and 10 after the incompletion. Now 59 seconds to go in the second quarter. Pocket started to deteriorate. Dungy had to get rid of it to Strickland, and he gets tackled and taken down. A great read by Jonathan Smith, the linebacker. 
Now third and long. It's like North Carolina, Dave, is taking a timeout. It's first. 48 seconds on the clock. Now we mentioned Eric Dungy and how good he's been here at Syracuse. How about the career records this guy owns? Total yards per game, almost 300 yards. Almost 250 in the pass game, 240 passing. We, we mentioned the nine 300 yard games and 27 rushing touchdowns. You talk about dual threat quarterback. Shares or holds 14 team records. Eric Dungy, I think he's la left a lasting impression. And this is the guy, Tom, you start talking about Eric Dungy as you look at his numbers today, that would like to leave as a guy that takes Syracuse back to some some prominence. And this is a team you mentioned off the top. This is a team in, in, in the mix now when you start looking at the Atlantic and their opportunity to do some damage. In addition to that, Dave, they have not been to a bowl game since the 2013 Texas Bowl, which they won against Minnesota. Total offense in a career, and Dungy's, Dungy's on the list with some impressive names. Well, you could argue three of those guys won the Heisman Trophy, and you could argue Deshaun Watson should have won the Heisman Trophy in 15 when he was the first guy to go for 4,000 passing and 1,000 rushing. That's a pretty good list to be on if you're Eric Dungy. Looking for their first third down conversion of the game. Dungy running all over the field. By a little time, around one man and two. Dungy past the 30, and Dungy got so it. close to the 35. That's what he needed, Dave. It's going to be very close, and it is a first down. How about that? And now as a defense, you're completely worn out. Looks like Dino may have burned a timeout here to save some time. 32 seconds left. How about that? We just talked about Eric Dungy. And being a dual threat guy, I don't think anything describes that more than that right there. 11 yards on the scamper by Dungy and a first down and a timeout on the field. And think about this, Tom, and you know this six foot four, 225, 230 pounds is Eric Dungy. It is an injury timeout. Tyler Powell is number 95, the senior for North Carolina, being attended to by the training and medical staff. Aaron Crawford out of that defensive front for North Carolina. So Powell has slid from outside to inside to play deep tackle, and he's made some plays today. So a little thin in that area anyway. North Carolina can ill afford to use Powell. All right, Dave, you're mentioning making those plays out of nothing. Take a look at these steel tools of the game, and we go to Cole Holcomb defensively for North Carolina. Well, just a great story. Former walk-on with scholarship in 16. Pound for found described as the best, as the strongest player on the team. He's a football savvy guy, a gym rat, if you will, studies film, but I think the thing that sticks out the most about him is he's tough and determined. Larry Fedora talked about that's what you want as a linebacker. And Larry loves uh, what uh, he brings to the table. And Seven tackles on the day. You love a guy that's kind of a self-made guy, too. That's what Larry Ford Fedora told, said about him. Is he was a self-made guy. He came in. Nobody had any expectation for him. He had expectation for himself. And here he is starting for North Carolina at the linebacker. Five and a half tackles for loss this season for Holcomb. Second on the team. The pass is complete. It's Riley across midfield. Riley dragged down at the 25. Boy, and Riley's... Kind of lucky to not be injured there. Holcomb drags him down to the back of his jersey. Didn't look like a horse collar. Looked like he got him by the numbers. And I think the officials are discussing that here. The Riley He's setting called, the clock. First and, Riley, of all and Riley called out of bounds at the top at the back end of this or the top of this route right here. Ooh, right there, stepped late out of bounds. So 22 yards of the previous play. This pass completed to 30. It's Riley again. First down yardage for Syracuse. Riley working the slot to the wide side of the field. Dungy knows he's got man coverage. It's a nice matchup. Very comfortable with that matchup is Derek Dungy. Syracuse is taking a timeout with 17 seconds left. And how about Riley on those two previous plays, giving Larry Fedora some headaches. Pro game for Syracuse. And they've played, North Carolina's played so well defensively to limit what we talked about. This was the number one scoring offense in the ACC coming in, 11th in the country at uh, 43 points per game. So it's a, uh, they finally have kind of untracked themselves here in the last couple of drives. One was a short drive, 
this is the first time they've kind of really had North Carolina on their heels moving the ball down the field. First well, down from the 28 now, Dave, with 17 seconds to go. Again, this is a situation where Syracuse has one timeout left, so the middle of the field is still available to you. Obviously, the clock stops. If you get more than 10, Dungey will keep that in mind. But you're willing to take that shallow crossing route. You've got guys that can run with the ball. Riley in particular, Johnson. And then you have the big man, the big matchup on the outside, Custis, if you want to take a shot down the field. So I think everything's available here to Eric Dungey. 205 total yards for the Orange in the first half, 148 in this quarter, and driving again. Already have a five-play, 32-yard drive for a score by Elmore. Carolina looks like they're going to play man. I expect them to get out of man, but they're going to stay in it. Dungey from the pocket, down towards the end zone, bounces away. Jamal Custis down there with Patrice Rene, incomplete. The, the ball's under thrown. Tom Custis wins off the start. Watch out quickly, Custis. You got to throw it down to the pylon. Throw it to that back pylon. He has the gear down. It allows Rene to get back in and bat it away at the right hand. If Dungey takes him to the back pylon, it's a touchdown. And now 11 seconds. Second and 10 for the Orange. Dungey back to the air. Has to create some time to throw it away. Uh-oh. Dungey at midfield is slow to get up. It's like Strobridge and Cater. Uh, Dungey's got a history of having some concussions in his career. And let's take a look at the end of this. Strobridge is going to throw him to the ground. Boy, you could argue that should be a roughing the passer call. He dipped his head. Watch the head come down. Boom. Hits him right underneath the chin. That's a roughing the passer call. They completely whiffed on that call. Dungey looks like he's okay. So Dungey on the sidelines. 46-yard attempt. Andre Schmidt. One for two in the first half. Missed from 44. Made from 25 yards in this quarter. I'll tell you what. You're going to get a review on this potentially for a targeting call. Potentially maybe. Huh? Did North Carolina just call the timeout? Timeout, North Carolina, their second of the half. It will be 30 seconds. I'm surprised this isn't being looked at as a shot to the head on Eric Dungeon. Just six seconds to go in the second quarter. North Carolina led most of the way on the strength of a touchdown in its opening drive. Syracuse has scored a touchdown and a field goal here in the second quarter. Well, excellent drive to get down in position. Remember, we talked about the double dip. Can, can Syracuse get a score at the end of the half and then get the score coming out of halftime? But take a look at Eric Dungey's ability to keep this drive alive. Remember, this is third down now. Scrambling for his life, third and long. Got to get to the 35. He gets there. And then from that point on, he decided to get the ball to Sean Riley, his big play receiver that works the slot. Two big catches there by Riley. And here you go with a field goal opportunity for Syracuse to close out the half. Dungey's fourth in school history in passing yards. 46-yard attempt, Andre Schmidt, one for two on the day so far. From 46 yards away, and it's good from Schmidt. Final play of the half is a field goal. For the redshirt freshman from Vernon Hills, Illinois. So he makes a couple of them in this quarter. Another one from 25 yards away. A touchdown run from Chris Elmore. Syracuse will get the ball to start the second half, and it's got the lead, 13-7. Yeah, some of the Syracuse coaches going out and getting Syracuse players away from North Carolina. I think they took a little bit of offense to the hit on their quarterback at the end there. 13 unanswered points for the Orange, and the senior Eric Dungey and his teammates are headed to the locker room. With the lead against the visiting North Carolina. Some shots for, for Nathan Elliott here in the second half. Kind of a little behind the door there with Larry Fedora. That was pretty cool. All right, Dave, time for our principal financial second half game plan. What well, you got? Well, North Carolina can't get the run game going, and that's really kind of their backbone. So their short passing attack will facilitate that, and maybe they can get back to the running game if they spread, North, uh, spread Syracuse out. Syracuse, just stay in gear. Keep it rolling. You had the last two drives of netted. Third, uh, have netted 10 points for you. Find a way to keep that rolling, and Dungey's going to get an opportunity to do that here to start the second half. Eric Dungey, 10 of 19, 119 yards passing. You can see the first half has started well for the Orange, but the second half have been issues for Dungey and the Orange. 
NC yeah, State, have. Dave, only 22 yards rushing in the first half. Average 1.2 per rush. Syracuse over 6 per rush. The ability for North Carolina to run the football is really kind of the backbone of what they want to do right now with Williams and Carter. So when North Carolina gets the ball back, we'll see what kind of adjustments Larry Fedora and his staff made. But first, it's going to be Eric Dungey. Second half from the Dome on homecoming. Low liner bouncing inside the five. Riley flag is out on the play as Riley's taken down near the 10. 10 yards on the return from Riley. Stobaugh made the play on special teams for North Carolina. Talk about a tone setter now. He tried to do that on special teams. During the return, holding, return team number 89. Buchanan will be half the distance to the goal from the end of the run, first down. An excellent job inside the 20. Excellent play by North Carolina. And now on top of that, you get the penalty. So when you start setting the tone on special teams, that's what coaches are looking for. You're looking for something that can kind of get you off the mark here to start the second half. 13-7 orange to start the second half of the first possession for Syracuse. Just shy of 10 minutes of possession. Well, the time of possession is not the big thing. It's the plays. They're well under their normal average of plays. Just 33 plays in the first half. Looking for the home run. First play. Custis in stride. Got some separation. Trying to get away and pull down near the 25-yard line by Greg Ross. Boy, he's going to get away with a push-off here. The 6'5 wide receiver. Watch him extend the left hand. This is an outstanding throw from Deji. You're not going to see it from that angle, but it, uh, just a, an extended left arm shoves the defender off of him. Third catch of the game for Custis. That one went for 68 yards. Catch and run. First and 10 orange. Dungey, the pump and the throw. Riley. That's over his head. Flag is out near the 19-yard line. Well, so there's the extension. See, the extension of the left hand creates the separation. Ross is in great position defensively to defend the big receiver, but I'm not sure how. You don't see the extension of the arm there. Automatic first down. It looked like Riley was going to try, try to fake a quick hit, a quick uh, screen to the outside, and then was held as he tried to turn it into a wheel route down the sideline. So the Orange finished the first half on a 48-yard field goal by Andre Schmidt. Got the ball to start the second half. And now they're back in the red zone. Near the 15 of North Carolina. Dungey's pass deflected in the air and incomplete. It was behind Moniel. Couldn't grab it. Boy, this is another one of those balls that's tipped in the air. North Carolina came in with only three interceptions on the year. They've had two balls that have been room serviced up in the air for them and have not been able to get it. The fourth row behind Moniel in the flat. Here's our red zone brought to you by CPI Security, the official security partner of the ACC. Talk about how Syracuse has had to settle for way too many field goals if you beat no Babers. Two for two in the red zone for the Orange. Field goal and touchdown. Dungey gets away. Dungey to the goal line. Touchdown, Syracuse. Eric Dungey on the run. Well, we talked about the physicality of the quarterback, and Eric Dungey shows it on this play. Cole Holcomb is clean coming off the edge, the middle linebacker. He runs right through the tackle and then steps through the rest of the North Carolina defense for a touchdown, his 28th rushing touchdown of his career. And that is a school record at Syracuse. He now has seven of the last 10 rushing TDs for the Orange this season. First possession, second half for the Orange. March it right down the field. Come out with a deep shot to Custis. And Davis and Little. Greatest player ever. You could never argue that. I would argue, Tom, that the greatest offensive player in football history is that guy right there. And North Carolina might have had the greatest defensive player of all time in Lawrence Taylor. Get those two games going head to head. But how about being able to just throw up greatest player ever? And no one's going to argue with that.
I mean, that's really what Jim Brown was. Certainly not in this dome, Dave. There won't be any <laughs> contention not here. Ratliff Williams, yard and a half deep. Ratliff Williams trying to break it outside with a stiff arm. And up here, the 25 as he rolls up in that direction. And we go down to Larisha. So, guys, I was just walking up and down the sideline for the Tar Heels, and they are very encouraging. We saw head coach Larry Fedora go up to his guys and say, just keep running, just keep playing. We can do this. We spoke to him on the phone, and he told us about it's a mental thing. It's a mindset, and obviously that's what he's trying to instill in his guys right now, to keep going, keep pushing, don't give up. And the key to that will be Larissa, the quarterback. Nathan Elliott has played extremely well. He's going to need him to play at a high level here. The Syracuse has got it cranked up on the offensive side. First chance for the Tar Heels. Elliott's pass complete to Newsom. Creative in space. Trying to get to the 30. You've got four and five orange helmets converging on Newsom. They talked about that short passing game coming out of the halftime break. This is something they're going to need to do. They're not running the ball with the uh, ability that they normally do. So the short passing attack becomes that run game on the perimeter. Remember, North Carolina scored on its first possession of the game. 11 plays and 75 yards to take a 7-0 lead, which they held for the better part of the first half until the final 156, and there is no gain on a run by Carter. Now, the tough part about this for North Carolina is Nathan Elliott's not a runner. So if I'm an edge defender, I'm not going to defend Nathan Elliott. I'm going to crash the inside like Robinson did right there, and I'm going to take away Carter to the inside. He's the more dangerous player. Third and five for Carolina. Elliott, incomplete, looking for Newsom. Well, Syracuse came in being chastised with how they defended the run in their last two games, but not today. They've done an outstanding job of shutting the door on North Carolina's run game. And it's been everybody. I missed one particular player. It's been team defense, but an outstanding job of creating an opportunity for them to get off the field here, certainly, in a three and out. Orange allow 180 yards against the opposition, rushing 11th in the conference. Better than that today as Riley backtracks inside the 25, but he's pulled down at the 20-yard line. 47 yards on the punt, the return a loss of two. ACC standings brought to you by PNC make today the day. Another good play. Uh, we can take a look at the Atlantic. Obviously, the game coming up this afternoon, huge. Clemson, NC State going head-to-head, -head, both in the top 20 in the country and playing for essentially a maybe a look at the uh, Atlantic Division title. Virginia Tech idle, kind of waiting. Virginia trying to win their third game to try to climb into that coastal scenario with Virginia Tech as well. Flag is out. False start. Offense, number five. Five-yard penalty, first down. Not the, start, not the start that Dino was looking no. for here in the second in the second drive. Came out really firing on all cylinders, much like they did at the end of the first half. That first drive was three plays and 94 yards for the Orange. Took less than a minute. It was a big pass play to Custis as Dungy runs into Smith. Well, it started out right off the start. Got backed up because of the penalty and the special teams by, by North Carolina. Custis might have got him with a push off there, but big play down the field. And then Dungy runs through the tackle of Holcomb for a touchdown. Incomplete pass for the Orange. Nikeem Johnson couldn't grab it from Dungy. And this is, these are kind of some of the inconsistencies that sometimes plagues Eric Dungy. Such a good player, but, you know, in second down and 15 right there, need that completion. That's going to get you about seven or eight yards, and now you're back to third and medium. We'll look at the first half possessions. One for five on third down, third and long. Dungy throws on the run, deflected and caught, past the 30-yard line. Taj Harris and a first down Syracuse. Boy, you talk about this ball should be intercepted, Tom. Ross is in perfect position to pick it, bounces it up in the air, and caught on the outside by Harris. You talk about a lucky break right there for Syracuse and not so lucky for North Carolina. 
Boy, they've had some opportunities with the ball tipped up in the air and just have not been able to get their hands on it. 17-yard pass play on third down. That is batted at the line. Jalen Dalton, number 97, knocks it to the turf. Jalen Dalton said, you know what? I'm going to take care of this myself. I'm going to let the ball get downfield. Pick number 97 right in the middle. Going to bat the ball down with that right arm. I've never asked the defensive line. I wonder if that hurts. I mean, you're like really close and you drill them right in the arm. They play it off pretty well. I'll bet it stings. What do you think? Well, I think most of the sting is taken away after a fine defensive play, Dan. Okay. How about that? Theoretically? Okay. Theoretically, it's second and ten. <laughs> 20 to 7 is the lead for the Orange. 20 unanswered points. Pass complete by Dungey. This is Johnson. And Cole, Cole Holcomb makes the play. Cole Holcomb does a good job of tracking this down. This is what they call a tunnel screen. Try to build an opportunity like a little punt return, but Cole Holcomb all over it at middle backer for North Carolina. Now you get third and long. Third and eight for Dungey. His pass to Custis is incomplete. Greg Ross was defending, and there was a lot of contact. Very physical play from Ross as we go back to Charlotte for an update. Well, this studio update is presented by Hardy's Try an All-Star Meal. Duke finally on the board, Coach. Yeah, what looks to be a busted cover by Virginia. Daniel Jones to Chris Taylor, 46-yard touchdown pass for Duke. Virginia on top, still 14-7 to in the third quarter. Coastal battle going on. Sounds like Coach got the information to Duke to fix that offense. Huh? Hoff Richter to punt now for the Orange. Newsom to receive the punt. He's going to watch it bounce near the 31-yard line and go out of bounds. 4.24 seconds on the hang time for Hoff Richter. The legendary head coach Ben Schwartzwalder, the head coach of the 19th. What are we doing? The Nicoderm CQ patch helps prevent your urge to smoke all day. Nicoderm CQ. You know why, we know how. 20 to 7 is the lead for the Syracuse Orange. ACC football and Raycom Sports celebrating 35 years of uh, broadcasting ACC events. So glad to have you with us. Tom Wilney, Dave Archer, and Arisha Harris on the sidelines. Newsome, second level. Newsome across midfield. Daz Newsom inside the 20 and finally written out of bounds by Scoop Bradshaw. Well, this is again a, an extension of the run game. Just coming across, that's going to be count as a pass, but it's just a short flip board, very similar to play he scored the touchdown on in the opening drive. They got 55 yards on that play by Newsom. Here's Williams to the end zone for the Tar Heels. 12 yards away. He's in the end zone and the quick strike ability of North Carolina to make it 2013. Well, you see how quickly both these offenses can strike. Larry Fedora right out there congratulating his offense as they come off the field. Two play drive. But just a good job in the interior. Got a great block right there by Vargas, the tight end, which springs him into the end zone. That's the power runner in Williams, the transfer from Ohio State. But Daz Musum's big play pushed him down in there tight. Fourth rushing touchdown, Antonio Williams. Just a couple of plays, and Coach Fedora's team is in the end zone. We've got a six-point game, and we'll be back after a word from your local military viewers in the state of North Carolina, certainly here in the Syracuse area and upstate New York, and also in Virginia and all over the country. And so glad that they can join us for ACC football. Yeah, absolutely, no question. Appreciate your service. Riley and Cullen are the deep men. Neither will get a chance at this one. So I'm going to take a look at this big play by Daz Newsom and what North Carolina tries to do. Tight splits. They're going to get the defense even to crash. Newsom's going to come this way, and all he has to do is get two blocks. Just a little flip to the inside. See the edge rusher crash to the inside. Now there's just two defenders out here to get by. Newsom going to step up the field, and now it's the great speed. He gets a block initially, and then another little clip block there, and then down the sidelines for Newsom, who set up the Anthony Williams touchdown run but uh, they you know it was funny because Larry Fedora hinted to Larisha Harris when he came out we've got some plays that we're gonna make here in the second the second half there's some opportunities and that's certainly one of them right there 55 yards longest play for Newsom in his career and the TD run for North Carolina its longest rush of the game 
12 yards into the end zone. Dungey down the middle of the field. Looking for that first down home run. And Dungey getting some help back to his feet as Tyler Powell put the hit on Dungey. Uh, and he had Cater back there as well. But the, the hit is what made Dungey have to turn it loose too early. See, so kind of feeling that one. Took a shot there in the left side of his ribs. But he, it made him throw the ball before he wanted to. Our first and ten line brought to you by Dish. Switch the Dish to get every major Division I college football game. Moneal piled up and fenced in. Loss of one. Powell again. And uh, Dorn coming up to the safety spot. But we saw Powell leave the game, number 95, earlier in the game. He's back in there. He's made, made a hit on the quarterback and made a play right there. Stepped in the backfield and it's forced third and long here for Syracuse. Just two of seven on third down of the game for the Orange. Pocket starts to crumble and down goes Dungy. Our first sack of the afternoon. It belongs to North Carolina. Allen Cater leading the way, and it's a loss of five for Syracuse. That's his second sack of the year, but what happens is it's six-man pressure. North Carolina going to kind of wander around, but you're going to get pressure here and here. And Dungy didn't have somebody open right away, so Cater is able to just take this kind of mush rush team and crush the pocket. And then Cater ends up with a sack. But a six-man pressure playing man coverage in behind. And Dungy couldn't find anybody to get the ball out to. So Newsom to return the punt from Hoff Richter. Whistle stops play with 9.31 of the clock in the third. Delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Eric Dungey now after an opening drive, kind of scratching his head a little bit. They haven't been able to move the ball the last couple times they touched it. So they're going to have to regroup here a little bit. And now for North Carolina, you've got Daz Newsom, who just had that huge play on that little short pass, standing deep. Got to perform kind of Create some fireworks in the punt return unit. 16 yard TD run for Eric Dungey to start the quarter. Newsom races up to it, wants the fair catch, and makes it near the 48. Excellent field position for North Carolina. 38 yards on the punt and a fair catch from Newsom. Our Yellowwood brand five star recruit is Michael Carter in that North Carolina backfield. Well, Michael Carter, Navarre High School down in Florida. You see 2,500 yards rushing and 45 touchdowns his senior year. And then in one game against American Heritage, ripped off 331 yards and seven touchdowns. I'd say he fits the bill as a five-star guy. Best starting field position of the game for North Carolina. Scored on their previous drive, just two plays and 25 seconds. Elliott's pass is too high. Anthony Ratliff-Williams, the intended target. The junior from Matthews, North Carolina. Yeah, what they would like to do is have a little bit more rhythm in the pass game, Tom. Where are we headed next, Tom? Dave, we're going to see the oldest rivalry in the South, Charlottesville, Virginia. We'll get you started with the ACC Blitz at noon. And then it's these North Carolina Tar Heels against the Virginia Cavaliers. The 123rd all-time meeting between the schools. And we have it for you on Raycom Sports next Saturday. Carter broke a tackle. To the 45 of the orange at eight yards on a rush by Michael Carter. Yeah, Evan Foster, the safety, who's the second leading tackler, number 14, is going to come in and butt him up straight ahead right there. And Carter spins off and puts his back to third and short, his third and two. What a run by Michael Carter. I think American Heritage has seen a little bit of that, haven't they? To the tune of 331 yards. This time Elliott wants to throw on third down. Five of 13 on third down near the 25-yard line. Anthony Ratliff-Williams. Cordy in coverage for Syracuse, 18 yards. Took away the short, easy throw, and so Williams said, or uh, Elliott says, okay, I'll take the deep shot, and I'll get it to my big-timer Ratliff-Williams on the sideline. Excellent throw by Nathan Elliott on the move. They expected pressure, rolled the quarterback, got got zone in behind, but they had a nice route on where it held the short defender and got the safety isolated on Ratliff Williams. A career high 23 completions in the game for Nathan Elliott at quarterback for North Carolina. They're going to go razzle-dazzle. It's intercepted. 
Corrales with the throw and the interception, Evan Foster. But give Cullen, the linebacker, the credit because Corrales, had he not had anybody in his face, is easily going to hit Tucker for a touchdown. This is what North Carolina does. They have these gadget plays. Watch the hit by number 24, Cullen, on Corrales. There's the hit, made him jump in the air and throw the ball. So it's short. And Foster's there. Look how far behind Tucker is behind the coverage. But because the throw was bad, because of the Cullen pressure, Foster ends up with the interception. Boy, and that's one of those plays that I think Larry Fedora had talked about with LaRicia Harris. We've got some plays we got a chance to make. We have to make them. Didn't make that one. Tenth interception of the season for the Orange. Third best in the ACC. After last year only picking off four passes as a team. Balls on the turf. Dungey tried to pitch it, still loose. Who's got the football? Looks like Aaron Roberts, number 59. All of a sudden, that ball started to roll forward. I'm not sure how Howard didn't handle the pitch. The pitch hits him right in the chest. The freshman puts the fr puts the pitch on the ground, and boy, Syracuse really fortunate to come up with the ball. And again, it's almost like North Carolina snake bit on getting takeaways. Only five on the year. Golden opportunity there. Just past the 15 yard line from Mo Neal. Cole Holcomb with another tackle. The middle backer came in the leading tackler on this team and makes another play and now has forced Syracuse into third down. Other than that opening drive, Tom Syracuse has struggled here in the second half, the last two drives. Dungey's got the time, escapes the pocket. Couldn't find anything downfield, Dave, and tried to run away, couldn't do it. North Carolina gets him, Jason Strobridge. Well, just a good job of rushing the passer now. Let's take a look at the downfield look that Dungey's taking a look at. Five receivers in the route. Can't really throw that one. That's the one he was looking at. Everybody else is covered, tied up. So Dungey gonna pull it down, but the rush, they do a good job. They were spying him with one defender, rushing him with three, and no way to skate out of there. Two consecutive three and outs now after going right down the field and scoring on their opening drive. They went 94 yards on the opening drive to start the second half. Newsom waits for the punt from Hop Richter. Another boomer back to the 25. Newsom gathers himself. Newsom cut it to 40. Newsom to midfield. Has a blocker ahead of him. Daz Newsom racing to the end zone on the punt return. Touchdown, North Carolina. Well, you all, you kind of wonder whether Hoff Richter just kicked it too far for Syracuse's coverage unit. Because Newsom gets an opportunity to gather this in and take it back. And boy, you see the athleticism. See, the ball is so deep that Syracuse anywhere in the, in the same zip code. And now he has a chance to set up the return. North Carolina did a really good job of not taking a couple of the blocks in the back end that would have been a clip and Newsom all the way to the house. 75 yards by Daz Newsom. Take a look and see whether Hoff Richter does his knee touch the ground with the ball in his hands. Can't really see from that spot. I mean, if there was ever a time where you didn't want the punter's knee to be on the ground on his own three-yard line or fourth down, this would be it. On a dazzling return by Daz Newsom. Can't tell. To, Dave, prior to that return of 75 yards by Newsom, Syracuse had allowed only 18 return yards all season. And we're looking to see if it's going to stand as Hoff Richter took a low snap his right knee is in question that is part of the review do we have indisputable video evidence to overturn it and this is such a weird situation Dave as you mentioned Syracuse wants this overturned if possible because Newsom went 75 yards on the punt return Tom let's take a look at the return now I want to talk about how far the kick goes and how far Syracuse is on the coverage okay Newsom going to circle under the ball and catch the ball look how far the coverage unit is, is from the ball now we'll 
view the ruling on the field stands. Now, keep going, guys. I want you to run it. Here's where the block is right here. He turns down that block. That would have been a clip right there. Decided not to make that block. Let Newsom make the defender miss him and then turns down the sideline. Sometimes we talk about blocks setting up returns or plays. Maybe it's the block you don't make, and that was a great opportunity to, to, for a clip right there that he turned down. I didn't catch the number of the, of the North Carolina player there, but that's a smart play. The punt was 58 yards. The return by Newsom was 75 yards. North Carolina has taken the 21-20 lead, and we're going back to Charlotte. This update is presented by Hardee's. Try an all-star meal. Number 16, NC State. In town, taking on number three, Clemson. Coach, what are you looking for? Can the NC State run defense rise to the occasion? Only giving up 107 yards per game, but Clemson, fourth in the nation, 280-yard rushing yards per game. Kickoff coming up in under an hour in Memorial Stadium on homecoming. It's the Textile Bowl. We'll all be watching. For now, back to you. Just a small game down there <laughs> at uh, Death Valley, huh? How about that game? And you, Dave Dorn talking during the week, he talked about how it was the one team they had not been able to get by was Clemson. This is a team they had beat. If you want to look at Dave Dorn's side of it, two years ago, missed the field goal at the end of regulation, lost in overtime. Last year, lost by seven, but there's the numbers. Ryan Finley leading the ACC in total offense. Travis Etienne rushing the ball with tremendous effectiveness. Had 200 yards rushing against the Syracuse team a few weeks ago. No return on the kickoff. Dave, it's just the fifth all-time ACC matchup between undefeated teams with at least five wins. Well, there you are. The NC State in the top 25. It's brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Yeah, the two remaining top 25 teams. The, the ACC is kind of beating itself up a little bit, but these two teams with a chance to maybe stick their head in front in the Atlantic Division. Heck of a matchup. You talk about that AC, that uh, NC State offense converting it 60% of the time on third down. Clemson's defense only giving up 27% on third down on defense. Heck of a matchup. Dave, that punt return by North Carolina for a touchdown. The first was 2015. Ryan Switzer, 78 yards against Miami. Riley's got the catch. Taj. Yeah, all Switzer, all Switzer did, Tom, was return seven in his career, which is an NCAA record, and uh, now returning them and catching the ball for the Pittsburgh Steelers. It is Riley on the grab. So a short second down situation for the Orange. These are a lot more advantageous, obviously, offensively, when you make some have some success on first down. So now they can take a shot here. They can do a lot of different things. Last two drives have been three and out for Syracuse. Dungy has the first down a little bit more to the 40-yard line. Tackled by Miles Dorn, the junior from Charlotte, North Carolina. Six yards and a first down for Syracuse. Boy, Strickland wanted that pitch. Uh, good job of Dungy realizing short yardage, but he did. When he pitched the ball out to Strickland, there was some room to run. Dungy did have a rushing TD two weeks ago in the overtime loss to Pittsburgh. What a tough loss for the Orange, Dave. 44-37. We did that game two weeks ago, and you wonder how the previous games are affecting these teams. Two weeks ago, Orange losing overtime. Last week, North Carolina, North Carolina losing a game that probably should have won. Well, in, in both these teams, spirited effort here so far. It's going to be Ravian Pierce, tight end. Well, Pierce, a guy that really they like coming in. The JC transfer out of Mississippi. Southwest Mississippi Community College had 29 catches a year ago. That's just his seventh catch of the year. Here comes the blitz on Dungy. Delivered it, took the hit, incomplete to Riley over the middle. How about the freshman, Trey Morrison? Trey Morrison's going to make the, the play with the left hand. But let's take a look at the heat. They put Dungy under some tremendous pressure. Again, coming with just five, more than five men. That would look like Dorn, the safety, coming on the blitz. And then Morrison, the freshman, on the back end. Dorn makes the hit. And a good job of Morrison not hooking Riley with the right arm. Kept the right arm out of it. Reached up and batted away with the left hand. So Hoffrichter, who sent his last punt 58 yards, the problem for the Orange was it was returned 75 yards by Daz Newsom for a touchdown. Wants the fair catch. Just inside the 10 and makes it successfully. 
The punt was 50 yards. Exclusive tickets to the 2018 Dr. Pepper ACC Football Championship game on sale now. Purchase a four-pack and receive four $5 Bojangles gift cards and four ACC hats. Reserve your four-pack today. Also enter to win a luxury suite for 10 at the acc.com slash suite life. Bank of America Stadium, December 1st in the Queen City. Yeah, I might make that purchase just for the four-pack of Bojangles. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. No, great weekend in Charlotte. They really have made that an event. The games have been outstanding. Looking forward to that. And a big nod to that will happen later on this afternoon as NC State takes on Clemson. Worst starting field position of the game for North Carolina. What a catch made by Ratliff Williams. Appeared to juggle it from contact for just a moment. Pulled it in. 14 yards. I don't know how he caught the ball. Scoop Bradshaw hits him at the top of this route. Number 18, Scoop Bradshaw comes in, makes the hit. Somehow he was able to squeeze that. What a game this afternoon for Ratliff Williams as the other Williams, his teammate Antonio, spins his way oh, for now, seven yards. Now, Tom, all of a sudden, North Carolina getting some footing in the run game. Williams had the touchdown run and just ripped off another run. Nothing for Williams. A low third down for Carolina. Now Carter's going to check into the game. Williams will check out. Now third and short. Remember late in the game, or late in the first half, they went fourth and short and went zone read. Elliott not a great runner. See if they stay away from that and go a little bit more RPO. Run pass option. Elliott's 35 yard line. Brown up near midfield. Diami Brown, the freshman from Charlotte, North Carolina. Big play on third down and 19 yards for the Heels. But it's Elliott extending the play. Elliott gets out of the pocket, extends the play, and Diami Brown does a good job of mirroring his quarterback. Once he sees Elliott get out of the pocket, Brown stops his route, stays in contact with the quarterback, and Elliott gets him the football. Elliott wants to go back to the air. A little touch on this one down the sideline. Knocked in the air. Green running down the sideline. It was deflected away. Yeah, Melifonwu, Melifonwu, who is in the game for Frederick, or for, yeah, for Frederick, is going to make a heck of a play. This is a freshman. Melifonwu does a good job with the left hand, bats it out of there, and knocks it out. They tried to run a little nod and go or a sluggo, slant go. And Melifonwu, the freshman, stayed in a perfect position to knock the football away. Excellent job. Kind of forced into service because Frederick hurt the leg earlier in the first half. Despite the incompletion, 272 passing yards in the game for Elliott. Hands off to Brown. Left side. He's got a first down. 35-yard line of the orange as Kingsley Jonathan made the tackle. There is a North Carolina player shaking up. It is number 13, Antoine Green, the receiver. Let's take a look at this run by Brown. Let's see if he falls on. Oh, yeah, they got the defender who's making the tackle slid into the legs. We're not going to want to look at this one. Nope. Slid in the legs of Antoine Green, the freshman receiver. Rolled up that lower leg. Green, the freshman from Rockledge, Florida. North Carolina has taken the lead here in the third quarter. After Syracuse scored 20 unanswered points. Couple of catches for Green in the game for 35, 34 yards, excuse me. Well, it's just, you're trying to block downfield, and it's something that all receivers kind of try to dread a little bit. They're kind of looking over their back shoulder, trying to, he's trying to do his job down the field, blocking, and you're going to get rolled up some. Just hope that that's not too severe. It certainly is something that's kept him on the field. Green was an outstanding track athlete in high school, Tom. Rockledge High School in Rockledge, Florida. Ran a 10, 900 meters. They got a lot of high hopes for this youngster. He made a catch earlier in the game, big-time catch earlier in the game. 
Only had two catches coming in, but had a big third down conversion in the first half. And getting more and more play time on the outside. See some of their North Carolina players kind of saying that little prayer for Green. And they were like seeing the, the cart come off the sideline to come get a guy. I don't care what color jersey you're wearing. You know how hard these guys work and get prepared all spring long, all through the summer. This is a youngster in his first year at North Carolina. Contingent of North Carolina fans making the trip from Chapel Hill to yeah, Central team, New York. And this is always travels well in North Carolina. It's a good sign. At least he's able to get up and get to that medical cart. And surrounded by his teammates. Freshman Antoine Green. A couple of catches in the game. Big receiver, 6'3, 200 pounds. Guy that Larry Fedora and Chris Kapilovic, their offensive coordinator, have a huge high hopes for this guy. Hoping he'll be able to recover quickly from this situation on the field, needing the cart, take him back to the dressing room for further evaluation. But great work by the medical staff for North Carolina and the folks here at the Carrier Dome. Yeah, they've had to go to the air cast there, Tom. So you hate to see that. So thoughts and prayers to Antoine Green, and hopefully he'll get back quickly and be able to recover from that injury. So now as an offense, when you start getting a little momentum, let's see how, how this affects guys. Sometimes when you see one of your guys get hurt, Sometimes it can affect you negatively or it can spur you on. Nathan Elliott's done an excellent job of directing traffic offensively. So Green headed back to the locker room. First and 10 for North Carolina. Ball at the 35 of Syracuse. This is a North Carolina offense. It's really gotten into high gear after an initial drive by Syracuse, a two-play drive to shove the ball in the end zone. It's really been North Carolina here in the second half, Tom. They've controlled the game defensively, limiting what Eric Dungy's been able to do, and their offense has done an outstanding job of moving down the field. Now, they're waiting. The cart is at the far end of the field. They're waiting to get Antoine Green in the tunnel and then move the cart out of the way. It's kind of in harm's way for a player if he were to be going that direction. I'm not sure the... I want to take every precaution in this situation. 14 unanswered points for North Carolina after Syracuse had scored 20 across the second and third quarters. First two drives of this half, Syracuse scored in 54 seconds. And then North Carolina scored in 25 seconds on two plays, Dave. Yeah, going to be really important now for Larry Fedora to, and, and Chris Kapilovic to re reset the thing here to offensively because there's been a little bit of downtime here. Got a little something going. Um, I'm sure he talked to Nathan Elliott at the timeout there and said, okay, now listen, let's get back to doing and talking and, and working through what we talked about at halftime. And I see Antoine Green being helped into the tunnel. Talked about North Carolina's explosive plays today, and, and it was something Syracuse needed to defend against, to damage control, if you will, and it's really what's driven North Carolina today. They've done a decent job of the short passing attack, but it's been the big play, and Daz Newsom, Newsom has been a part of two of them and won the latest, the punt return for a touchdown that's put North Carolina in the lead. 75 yards on the return by Newsom. One point lead for North Carolina. They'll go a little razzle dazzle. Ratliff Williams. And just short of the 20 yard line. 
Andre Sisco on the tackle, 14 yards, and now Ratliff Williams favoring the left arm. How about the call coming out of the break, though, Tom? Okay, you're sitting there, you're sitting there defensively, and you're waiting and all those type of things. And Larry Fedora dials up the reverse to Ratliff Williams. Good for a first down at the 21 for North Carolina. Michael Carter slammed to the turf at the 15. All of a sudden, North Carolina really kind of dictating pace on the interior. J.J. McCargo, the center, got a huge block right there to spring, spring Michael Carter. Second and three, seven yards. On the previous play by Carter. Elliott looking to the sideline for further instruction. Keep an eye on that clock, too. We're late in the third quarter. Syracuse had the halftime lead. North Carolina has it now. That's Michael Carter. Stutter step move. No game. Our red zone is brought to you by CPI Security, the official security partner of the ACC. Mentioned North Carolina coming in. It only converted nine, eight of 19 trips into touchdowns, which is 42% or 13th in the ACC in the red zone. 7 of 15 on third down in the game for North Carolina. It's third and three. Inside of a minute to go in the third. Elliott looks left and goes down. A loss on the play of three for Nathan Elliott. Alton Robinson and his teammates in there. It looked like Slayton is in there as well. Number 95. So they're going to try to throw a trap block out there. Robinson is the initial guy, as you just you talked about, Tom. They could not get the trap block on him by Polino, the guard. And so Robinson makes a play when they needed it the most defensively. Freeman Jones, 34-yard attempt. He is 0 for 1. Missed a 50-yarder in the second quarter. This from 34. And Jones will knock it through for three more for North Carolina. With just six seconds to go in the third quarter, three more points thanks to Freeman Jones, the senior from Bunn, North Carolina. Okay, Robinson's out here. He's going to come here. What they're going to try to do is pull Polino and trap him and run behind it, but Polino can't get there. He traps, he tries to get there, but he just cannot beat Robinson to the point of attack. And Robinson folds in and makes the play. So we talked about how good these two edge guys are. There's a little demonstration from Alton Robinson. So Larry Fedora's team coming to the dome in the fifth all-time meeting between the programs. And every time previous, the visitor has won the game. North Carolina has the 24-20 lead late in the third. Yeah, it was interesting talking to North Carolina's coach. and say, well, this is a team you don't see very often. In fact, you've never seen them up here before. And he said, or they've never seen them before since the ACC started. He says, yeah, we're kind of looking at it as like a non-conference game. We just have never seen the guys before. No return on the kickoff. So the Orange, which started the second half, Dave, going right down the field for a touchdown. They've sputtered the rest of the way through this quarter, and now there is a flag of the play. Syracuse had the 13-7 halftime lead. Offsides, kicking team, number 31. That's a five-yard penalty to be added on to the subsequent spot. First down. Well, Tom, what's happened here in the second half? North Carolina has challenged Syracuse a little bit. They're playing man coverage on the outside, and they're bringing five and six man pressures at the quarterback. So it's going to be imperative for Syracuse to have success on first down so North Carolina can't get in some of these exotic blitzes they've been dialing up on third and long. 20 points in the game for the Orange. They average 43 per game, first in the conference. Dungey on the final play of the quarter for two yards. We turn to the fourth quarter, and these two teams both in need of a win after losses last week. Trying to find the answer. North Carolina has dialed it up for three quarters. Field and got the big punt return by Newsom, and that's the difference right now. First since 2015 in Ryan Switzer for this North Carolina program. Dungey, 16 of 31, 216 yards, trying to add to that. 
Instead trying to add to the rush total and not getting a whole lot to the 30 and down to Larisha. Well, guys, we spoke to Mo Neal and asked him about his relationship with Dungey, and he characterized him as a fiery cat, a guy that everybody likes on the team, somebody who's tough and motivates them both on and off the field. Kylan Whitner even said the same thing, that Eric Dungey has a lot of energy off the field, even when they play ping pong, and we're going to need to see that energy from Eric Dungey as they continue. Larisha Dungey gets sacked for the third time today. Had very little time as the pressure came. Number four is Alan Artis. Well, Artis comes through untouched, and this is what I just got through talking about. North Carolina has gone to six-man pressures. Here comes all the people coming. They don't have enough to block. And Artis makes the play. Alan Artis makes the tackle. Here's a player shaking up well, on the play for North Carolina. Alan Cater is number 33. You think about North Carolina now. You talk about you see Cater on the side on down the field. They are beat up. Some on defense and some guys aren't even here because of suspension. So playing about three and four deep on the defensive side of the ball Aaron Allen Artis being one of those guys and certainly Cater on the field because they're big time on the outside Malik Carney back home serving a suspension. But for Eric Dungey. Well, he's got to be they got to be swimming their inefficiency on first down is killing them. It's allowing North Carolina to come up with some of these six man pressures and there's no place to go with the ball. Antoine Green for North Carolina was already taken off the playing field with an apparent right leg injury back to the dressing room. 24 20 now and fourth down for the Orange as they attend to Alan Cater or Dungey. Does have a rushing TD today for the Orange and that was on the very first drive of the third quarter. When you go back to their game two weeks ago, Tom. See Cater getting some attention here on the, on the field. You go back to their game two weeks ago, and Eric Dungey completed less than 50% of his passes against Pitt, and we're in that realm right now where he's right on that 50 number, which is not not acceptable for the Newha School of Public Communications on the Syracuse University campus. We go up to the Quad and Hendricks Chapel on this beautiful campus in the fall. Celebrating homecoming. Cater was helped to the sideline by a couple of his teammates. It was fourth down for the Orange. Hoffrichter on the punt. He'll go rugby style. Newsom will stay away from it. And the roll takes it down to about the 36 yard line. Well, we talk about playmakers in the game, and, and Daz Newsom has been all of that for North Carolina. Made some big catches to extend drives. And then had the huge run here in the second half that set up the Williams touchdown. But then the play of the game so far for North Carolina is the 75 yard punt return by Newsom to light up the scoreboard. Dare I say he's been dazzling. You dare. And so does North Carolina to try to get a win on the road. It would be their first of the Ball season out. as Carter put the head down and lost the football. It is orange football. A turnover by the Tar Heels. Syracuse gets it back. Ryan Guthrie on the cover for the Orange. And it looks like Andre Sisco, the freshman, who comes in leading the nation interceptions, number 19's the guy that's going to make the hit. Yeah, Alan Sisco, number 19, the freshman, forces the ball out. And what about Michael Carter, who was the fumble a week ago against... Virginia Tech going in to seal the game. He lays the ball on the ground here in the fourth quarter on the hit by the freshman Cisco. And Syracuse is set up for the short field opportunity. In business at the 38 yard line of North Carolina. Carter did run for 165 yards, a career high in that loss to Virginia Tech last week for North Carolina. Four point lead for the Tar Heels. Mo Neal on the run, and we check in with Marisha on the sidelines. So, guys, for this season, the 2018 season, they started a tradition where they hand out these shirts right here the Ball Hog t shirt. So, I'm sure we'll see Ryan Guthrie get one, and also Evan Foster for that earlier interception. But this is a new tradition 2018. You get one of these shirts if you have an interception or any other turnover for defense. Dungy. Extending the play, tucking and running. Eric Dungey cuts it to 15 and down to the 11. Yeah, 
this is Tom where he's his most dangerous. The designed run plays have not worked today for Dungy, but when he gets out of the pocket, we saw the third down scramble before the end of the first half that extended drive and led to a field goal. And now a big run here, a broken play. And Dungy gets outside and pushes it inside the red zone. Dungy got 22 yards. Trying to convert from the fumble recovery by Guthrie. Moneal stumbles down to the five. The ball is bouncing around near the goal line. Who's got it? Boy, it's a touchback. North Carolina recovers. North Carolina recovered in the end zone. The initial signal was a touchback, meaning North Carolina football. The question is, is Mo Neal on the ground before the ball comes out? There wasn't a lot of argument for Mo Neal. Patrice Rene came up with it as the ball bounced around the goal line of the fumble by Neal. Let's see if the ball is out. Neal's going to spin, makes a great move right there. It doesn't spin. Yeah, the ball's coming loose before he ever gets to the ground. And North Carolina comes up with a turnover. Patrice Rene on the, re on the recovery. Boy, they had, they've had opportunities throughout the game to get a takeaway. Dave, they are reviewing this play. I can't tell if he's dead, if the ball's coming loose before the left knee touches the ground. Let me take a look at that again, guys. Re-rack that one for us to see if we can look at it again. Is the evidence there to overturn the call, which on the field is fumble and See, touchback? The ball's, yep. Yeah, the ball's, North coming Carolina. Out, ball's coming out before the knee hits the ground. See, the ball's out right there. The ball's out, and he's got—he didn't have a knee on the ground. That should—that should stand as a fumble. See, the ball is out now. The ball's out, and he's nowhere near the ground. And there was no contact. He just kind of lost control of it as he was going to the ground and. Trying to brace himself with the left hand. I guarantee you he's hoping against hope there that he <laughs> remember Dave, the Remember, Mo Neal is the only player on the Syracuse roster from the state of North Carolina. You never want to look too far ahead on the schedule, but I imagine that Mo Neal was looking at this game with wide eyes on homecoming against the Tar Heels. So we had a fumble by North Carolina recovered by the orange Dungy ran 22 yards Neil makes an exceptional move Dave but then loses control on the way to the ground yeah just didn't take care of the ball down there tight you got to cover that ball up when you're in traffic I think this will remain North Carolina's football and they initially waved it as a touchback which would bring the ball out to the 20 for North Carolina Patrice Rene was on the recovery so it was called on the field Tom called a fumble on the field must have the indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field again touchback I think there's a confirmation here they call it a fumble and I think you're going to get confirmation on the shot we've showed you from that end zone shot ball certainly out before the knee was down I'm one for two on the day North Carolina has turned it over twice and now review the ruling on the field stands Syracuse has turned it over hands. Wow what a turn of events. The Orange get the turnover, run it down near the five yard line. Neal fumbles and it's back to the Tar Heels. Wow. And that expression from that fan on homecoming might say it all at this juncture for the Orange. Well, and it's something that Syracuse has not done this year. They have not turned the ball over a ton this year. Came in plus eight in the giveaway takeaway ratio. Had only turned the ball over seven times all year. But a big turnover right there. First and ten from the 20. Elliott, Ratliff Williams. That's nine yards on that play, Dave. That's his ninth catch of the game, 79 yards receiving. And a nice job by Elliott to hold the ball because Ratliff Williams is tangled up with Melifon with the corner until he comes on the slant. And then Elliott throws him with a little changeup. Took a little bit off of it to get him the ball to the inside. Second and one for Nathan Elliott. The junior quarterback from Salina, Texas, does have a TD pass in the game. The left-hander is on target, and that's complete to Newsom. He's got a first down and more beyond the 30 and close to the 35, right into Kylan Whitner for five yards. Boy, Elliott got crushed on that play, letting the ball go. Kings 
obviously Jonathan came in and put a big hit. Newsom got the ball underneath, but a good job again of distributing the ball by Nathan Elliott. First and ten line brought to you by Dish. Switch the Dish to get every major Division I college football game. Williams. Williams across midfield trying to accelerate. This is Williams and tackled near the 10. Scoop Bradshaw had to run him down. Antonio Williams downshifting deep into Orange territory. The Ohio State transfer. Williams comes in with some hard running on the interior. Big legs, hard to wrap him up. And then you see some speed down the field to push this down to the 10-yard line. But North Carolina is taking control of the line of scrimmage in the run game. 56 yards for Williams. And now Jordan Brown. A more modest game. As the clock continues to roll now, 11-20 and counting. Two yards on the previous play and 40 on the tackle. Now we looked at this Syracuse defensive front against the run game and really had been pushed around in the run game two weeks ago against Pitt, three weeks ago against Clemson. And it's starting to happen again a little bit here in the second half of this game. Two for two in the red zone for Carolina. Jordan Brown. No gain. Now see, North Carolina cannot get conservative down here. They have an they have an opportunity to really put Syracuse behind the eight ball. If they're to score a touchdown here. But if Syracuse can hold a field goal, it's just a one-score game. So that's certainly where their eyes are. Can we get a stop here on third down if you're Syracuse? A touchdown and a field goal in the game of the red zone for North Carolina. Third and goal. Elliott looking left and being chased. That one sails out of bounds. A flag is thrown. Also that holding area there. You'll probably almost certainly decline this and force the field goal if you're Dino Babers. Trey Blake is our referee this afternoon. Holding offense number 55. That penalty is declined. Is all the player before foul. Now, J.J. McCargo, the center, is the guy that's going to get flagged. Right here, reaches across. He's going to drag down the blitzer. Pretty easy call because this will make look like Guthrie, the linebacker. So it was an Armstrong. Maybe Armstrong, one of the linebackers coming through, drug to the ground. But after Syracuse gives up the big run, they kind of get what they want defensively here and make North Carolina kick a field goal. Jones is one for two in the afternoon. This attempt will be from 25 yards. He hit in the third quarter from 34 yards away. From 25 yards away, and it is good from Freeman Jones. Antoine Williams with a huge run, and all of a sudden, North Carolina controlling it. Look at the second half possessions. Came out just thundering. Three plays, 94 yards. Dungy runs it in for a touchdown, and all of a sudden, you're up 13 points. But since then, the offense has done nothing. See, two, two series with minus yardage, and then the fumble going in by Bo Neal. And a good answer, sir. And North Carolina takes it right down the field for a score. Just nine points all season off turnovers now for North Carolina, but the field goal gives them the seven-point lead. We're going back to Charlotte. Check in with Tommy and Katie. Thanks, Tom. This update is presented by Hardy's. Let's head back to Durham where David Cutcliffe pulling out some tricks. A little trickery on the goal line by Duke. T.J. Roming passed to Davis Copenhaver. 22-yard touchdown pass for the Blue Devils. Virginia still up 20-14 to 14 in the fourth quarter, guys. Wow, what a battle. Coastal. Copenhaver had a TD catch last week in our game at Georgia Tech, 128-14 by the Duke Blue Devils. First, Branding had a huge day last week catching the football for the Duke Blue Devils. First and 10 for the Orange, it's Dungey. Just improvising there, threw it out to Riley. We don't see that very well, often. It's a called play. Now, you didn't like necessarily like the throw, but it's a it's a it's a zone read, and then when you get outside, now you've got the run pass option. Dungey can keep it or throw it to the outside. A little unconventional way of getting it to Riley, but it worked out pretty good for a nine-yard game. Second and short. Howard, short yardage back, absorbs some contact, gets a first down for the orange. 
Here it is to Jeremiah Clark, but got enough for a first down to move the chains for Syracuse up to the 38 yard line. A good hard running by the freshman. Ran right into Miles Dorn, the junior safety, and ran right through him. On the previous drive, Syracuse was knocking on the door. Neal fumbled. Now they're going to go gadget style, and Johnson has nobody to throw it to. Oh, and that's one where Johnson's got to be tutored to throw the football away. Let's take a look at it. They think they've got a matchup to the outside, but see, North Carolina plays in depth. There's no place to throw the football. It was just a one-man route, and they thought they were going to catch North Carolina in, in potentially a tight coverage scenario. North Carolina fell off. O'Neal on the sideline. Trying to sort through that loose ball in the last series. Trying to shake it off and watch his teammates. Dungy. Put some zip on this one to Custis, who's fighting off Greg Ross. Incomplete. I gotta give Greg Ross a ton of credit. Now he's been flagged once and got beat on by Custis to the inside on a on a touchdown, but he's battled all day long. Ross is 6'1. He's a good sized corner, but you're got a 6'5 wide receiver competing against you. It's an all-day fight. Usually in third long situations, it's a screen draw scenario. Try to get some of the ball, get, get yourself back to where you might consider going for it. But Dungy, his ability to keep the plays alive, you never know. Got to do it here, Dave. Surveying his options, doesn't have a lot. Trying to throw it forward. I didn't hear a whistle as Dungy threw it forward. Trey Morrison dragged him down. Yeah, but it's a bad decision, Tom, because you're in the pocket. They are saying North Carolina ball. Because yeah, there's no... Now, they'll have to look at it on replay, as we will. But I'm not sure why he did. He didn't have anybody in the area to throw the ball to. Well, Powell was around his legs, and then Morrison scooped it up. Let's take a look. Is there anybody for him to flip the ball to? See, he still, essentially still has been kept in the pocket. And he just kind of pushed it. I think he did try to push it forward. Yeah, he does throw it forward, so you could make the determination he threw it forward. And because there's no flag called. Looks like he might have even been down before the ball came out. You know, Paul, uh, Powell again. How good has Powell been? Tyler Powell is again around the quarterback. Let's see if the knee's down. Yeah, knee's down. Well, it's close. Looks like the knee might be down before he ever released it. And it would be. The ruling on the field is fumble because there was no distinct whistle after Dungy shoveled it forward and then it was scooped up by Trey Morrison. Although Dungy went right to the official to plead his case. Yeah, I just think there, you could see frustration setting in on Eric Dungy a little bit. Some of his decisions he's making with the ball. That's not a veteran play by a quarterback right there. Nobody in the area. He never really escaped the pocket, so it's kind of an intentional grounding scenario as well. Well, Dave, either way, if the call is overturned because the ruling on the field is fumbled, it would be fourth and long for the Orange. 8.43 to go in our fourth quarter. After review, the runner's knee was down prior to losing possession of the ball. It'll be Syracuse's ball at the 27-yard line, the fourth down. So fourth down for Dino Babers, third-year head coach for the Orange. Good job by the replay official there to, to get that one right. That was a huge moment right there. North Carolina gets up to the football there. They had a chance to maybe seal the game away. Daz Newsom waits for the punt from Hoff Richter. 75 return, 75 yard return on a punt for a touchdown for Newsom. Wants the fair catch this time near the 30 yard line. He's got it. First and 10 for North Carolina on a punt of 43 yards. Tailgating at homecoming. Well, right now it's the Orange trailing by seven to the high 28 completions. He's been outstanding. They've done a great job of taking care of the ball. They've been good enough on third down. Got the big, big play really in the game is the punt return by Newsom. And they, they've limited the run game of Syracuse. Elliott has used eight different receivers. 
is Williams near the 40. Whitner on the tackle. That's 11 yards and a first down for North Carolina. What a performance by the Tar Heels here in the second half. They have reeled off 20 unanswered points. And yeah, give Chris Kapilovic a ton of credit the way he's calling plays. He's really doing a nice job of diagnosing what Syracuse, whether they're going to play man and come with pressure or whether they're going to play zone. See Nathan Elliott look to the sideline. Do we want to change it? They stay with the play call. Elliott's pass underneath and caught. Newsom flashing across up near midfield. And we go to Charlotte and Katie for an update. Well, this update is presented by Hardy's. Let's head back to Durham where Virginia's getting back on the board. Bryce Perkins spins, makes one miss, and finds Evan Butts for 16-yard touchdown pass. Virginia pulls ahead. After that, Perkins found Alameda Zacchaeus for the two-point conversion, 28-14 in the fourth. One of the great names in college football, Alameda Zacchaeus. We will see those Cavaliers next week against this North Carolina program. Breaking away there was Brown who took away the tackle. And went on the other side of the 50 into orange territory for a first down. Guthrie makes the tackle in six yards for Brown. Antoine Cordy is in the backfield before they even handed the ball off. He moved before the tackle even moved. I don't know how he wasn't offside, but somehow he wasn't. But a heck of a run by Brown to make him miss. Well, he was unabated to the runner. <laughs> he had a chance to make the play and just completely whiffed on him. Dave, North Carolina in search of its first road win of the season. Last road win came November 9th at Pittsburgh last year, some 346 days ago. 34 to 31 against the Panthers. Whistle before the start of the play. And a timeout, North Carolina. Timeout, North Carolina, their first of the half. Time out of the field. After Syracuse put an initial drive on the board, it's been all Tar Heels. 20 unanswered points. Led 24-20 after the third quarter. They've got a 25-yard field goal to make a 27-20 from Freeman Jones through the fourth. That is Nathan Elliott directing this offense today. Looking for the first road win of the season for the Tar Heels. His pass down the middle of the field is incomplete. The receiver was spilled. Thomas Jackson, number 48. Boy, his eyes got kind of big. I'm talking about Nathan Elliott. He had Ratliff Williams one-on-one -on, -one on the outside to extend the drive. Elliott's done such a good job of taking what Syracuse was willing to give. That time they came with a zero blitz, meaning nobody in the back end. And he took a shot down the middle of the field. Our first and ten line brought to you by Dish. Switch to Dish to get every major Division I college football game. So glad that you're with us today for ACC football on Raycom Sports. This is Elliott. Up near the 35-yard line and a first down. Foster forced him to the turf, but it's a first down North Carolina. Tom, and talking about the play calling by Christian Kovilovic, they showed this swing pass to the wide side of the field with the back in motion all day. They have not shown that play at all. Quarterback draw, there's Chris Kapilovic, the offensive coordinator. He's been brilliant today calling plays. And Nathan Elliott runs the quarterback draw for a first down. They haven't shown that look all day long, although it comes off of the same look with the back and the flat throw the swing pass. Excellent design. Inside of six minutes to go in the fourth. Ratliff Williams can't hang on. And Melifano makes another nice play at the corner spot. Remember, he was forced into action because Frederick, their starting corner, injured and looked like with an ankle, lower body injury, and he's played well on the outside. Made a good hit there on Ratliff Williams to jar the ball out. Melifano is a redshirt freshman from South Grafton, Massachusetts. Inside the dome, where Syracuse has not lost this season, Dave, 3-0. Inside the carrier dome. One and zero in conference play. Trying to get the right play here. Trying to get the right play in on second and long. They're going to think about it a little bit further. Timeout, North Carolina, second of the half.
With 5.49 to go in the fourth, we talk about our next destination. Next Saturday, the Raycon Sports Game of the Week. It's the Charlottesville as the Tar Heels take on Virginia. Coverage begins noon Eastern with the ACC Blitz powered by the all-new 2019 Ram 1500 with Katie and Tommy. Yeah, excited to see Bryce Perkins, the outstanding quarterback for Virginia, who's playing well again today. And how about Daz Newsom bringing some of that dazzling stuff. Up 20, uh, Virginia lead 20-14 against Duke right now. That's a week after their huge upset of number 16 Miami last week. South's oldest rivalry renewed for the 123rd time. They started in 1898. Perkins has run for two touchdowns today. And similar type scenario that North Carolina is facing today with Eric Dungey. Bryce Perkins, the dual threat quarterback, is doing everything for Virginia. Go back to 1892 for that oldest rivalry in the South. They played twice that year, Charlottesville and Atlanta, and next week we go to Charlottesville. Elliott, right side. Antonio Williams. Cisco good, stopped him. Yeah, another good block on the outside. Jake Vargas, the junior line, uh, junior tight end, is going to get a block for Williams. Opportunity now here for, for Syracuse to force the long field goal. Well, the, the MO so far has been Syracuse come with pressure play man coverage. And it looks like they're going to do that here. here. Look at all the guys in the box. 7 of 17 on third down. Run to the right side with Antonio Williams, short of the first down marker. And a timeout taken by Syracuse immediately with 5-12 on the clock. I think you're up 24-20 right there. You're Larry Fedora. You may be a little bit more aggressive play call-wise. But knowing that a field goal makes this a two-score game with five minutes left, you can understand the run game. Jones attempted six field goals against Virginia Tech last week and made four of them. His long on the season is 49 yards at East Carolina. He might is be, two for three on the day, Dave. And you might be might be kind of guarding against some of those demons that have crept in. North Carolina's made some mistakes in the fourth quarter that have cost them some games. Larry Fedora told us he said he thought he thought his close his team was very close. They're playing really good football. And they've showed they've shown that here on offense today. Lost last week against Virginia Tech 22-19 in a game they certainly could have won. 45-yard attempt. Jones has connected on attempts of 34 yards in the third quarter, 25 yards here in the fourth. Freeman Jones from 45 yards away. No good to the left. A bad snap. Tom had a tough time handling the snap. Did Manny Miles, the holder. Ball was on the ground, and I don't think it was a clean look. Let's take a look at the snap here. Watch where the ball is. Ball down on the ground, so not a clean look as Freeman approaches the ball. The hands are still around the football. Nice job of getting the ball down, but it bothered Freeman, I think. Freeman Jones on the kick. So now two for two on the afternoon for Jones. Set it on his leg. See, read his lips. Bad snap. Correction. Two for four for Jones, who has made two field goals and missed just a moment ago. So as bad as it's looked for secure Syracuse here in the second half, you got everything in front of you. You got a chance to get right back in this game with a good offensive drive. And DeVito in at quarterback. Yeah, number 13. DeVito going down the sideline. It's caught. Jamal Custis on the first pass from DeVito. Down near the 20. They'll mark him out at the 22-yard line. How about your inner just come right in and sling it, Tommy DeVito? Oh! Had thrown 34 passes on the year. His most playing time was against Florida State, where he was outstanding. Led him to victory in the second half. Hits Custis, who got creased over the middle. That previous play, the first toss from DeVito, 50 yards to Custis down the far sideline. And, and what you were talking about with getting the ball out in front of these receivers and let them go get it. And that was an excellent throw by DeVito. 
Four receivers set for Tommy DeVito, the redshirt freshman, Cedar Grove, New Jersey. Don, Don Bosco prep, prep product. There's his game against Florida State where he was outstanding, came in relief of Dungy. His lone TD pass of the season against the Knowles, and this one is on target for Taj Harris. Is it enough for the first down? It is. Again, ball coming out on time, Tom. DeVito making the decision and getting the ball out. They, now all of a sudden this crowd's in it here in the yeah, carrier, And they can get a first down, Dave, down by the one-yard line. DeVito. Harris. Can't spin out of the tackle at the eight-yard line. North Carolina's done a good job, Tom, with that three receivers of the boundary set. They're trying to make it look like screen and then run two to receivers, one up the seam and one up the sideline. But North Carolina has not been biting on the pump fake and giving away that short throw. Second and seven. Three for four in the red zone today. DeVito looking. Flag is out. Throws it incomplete. Knocked away from Dante Strickland. Number seven, Jonathan, Jonathan Smith. Holding offense, number 63. 10-yard penalty, still second down. Got Evan Adams, the right guard, for a hold. When you're struggling to get touchdowns, just don't need major penalties. Now, the one thing you lose a little bit with DeVito being in the game, still a, a decent athlete, but Dungy's such a powerful runner down here. DeVito, not quite that guy. He does have one rushing touchdown on the year, but he's not the guy you're looking for to run the football and design quarterback runs. 17 points in the red zone today. DeVito, elusive to his left, throwing on the run, and it's well out of bounds. Good, good pressure by North Carolina, initial pressure, and then good secondary pressure by Armstrong, the linebacker. I'm sorry, Jonathan Smith, the linebacker, coming up and forcing him out of the pocket. So now third and long. I would expect North Carolina to play some zone coverage here. Let's see if they, they've been spying Dungy. Let's see if they turn the four-man pressure loose. In comes one of the freshmen, Chris Collins. Guy they have high hopes for, number 17, has checked in a gigantic defensive end at six foot four. Going to come off that left edge. Five receivers set, DeVito. Pocket is 30. DeVito throws. Strickland goes up to grab it, dies for the 10-yard line. That on third down and well short of the marker near the one. I think you got to go here, Tom. 2.57 on the I'm clock not, and rolling. I'm not sure that ball was intended for Strickland either. I think he was trying to get the ball to Riley, and Strickland made a circus catch. Well, there's no question Syracuse is going to go right here. See what offensive coordinator Mike Lynch can dial up against Larry Fedora's defense. There's Riley right there, their best playmaker. First chance on fourth down of the game. Going to the back corner of the end zone. Incomplete. Trey Morrison was back there defensively for the Tar Heels, and they turned back the orange. How many plays has the freshman Trey Morrison made for him today in the back end? This is a wheel route down the sideline. Let's take a look at the heat. Here comes the pressure. Dorn coming on the safety blitz. Pretty good job by Syracuse to pick it up. And the wheel route down the sideline. Morrison does a good job of getting his head around and just bats it away. He's been, he's been really good in one-on-one -on -one man situations. DeVito was looking for Nikeem Johnson. Saw DeVito go over to Eric Dungy. No word on his status as to why Dungy was replaced on that drive by DeVito. He's got his helmet on, Tom. Yeah, looks you okay. Some kind of issue, they generally take your helmet from you. So now 2.29 to go. North Carolina has the football. Syracuse has two timeouts. Tar Heels have one. First and 10 from the 10. Ooh. How about Williams up to the 15 Bruising and beyond it? <laughs> wow. Pad popping action. There's a timeout taken by the Orange. Here's our performance of the game. David is brought to you by your local Chevy dealers. Number 11, 
Nathan Elliott. Well, he's one yard away from his career record of 313 in a game. 31 completions is his personal best. I just think his ability to distribute the football across the field. They were not able to run the ball early in the game. They had to defend on Nathan Elliott to create some offense for him. And he did it a number of ways. Threw the ball on time. He had a number of times where he was forced off his spot. Buy some time, make the back, back, back foot throw. Stay alive. By time, find somebody open. And Nathan Elliott, we've seen maybe his finest performance as a Tar Heel. If they get this kind of play from Nathan Elliott moving forward, I like North Carolina's chances in every game they play. He's played really well today. Coming off of the loss last week against Virginia Tech, coming on the road for North Carolina. Cade Fortin, who the freshman had started the game against Virginia Tech and had to leave with an injury late in the second quarter. Elliott came on in relief. Tar Heels came up just short as Virginia Tech scored a touchdown with 19 seconds left for the winning margin. But what a response by Larry Fedora's team as Elliott will keep it up to 15. They're going to be very, obviously, very conservative down here. Try to eat clock. Syracuse burns their final timeout for 217 left. So North Carolina, the, the conversation in North Carolina's huddle right now with Chris Kapilovic and, and Larry Fedora with his team is one first down could potentially win the game for us. North Carolina will be part of the Raycom Sports Game of the Week against the Virginia Cavaliers. That's on the road in Charlottesville. They follow that up with a game at home against Georgia Tech and then on the road against their rival playing for the victory bell, the Duke Blue Devils on September 10th. Yeah, it's an it's a interesting schedule for them and obviously there's some big things coming up for Syracuse. They had hoped to get business taken care of today because they got a heavyweight coming to see them pretty soon. They do. NC State is in the building next week where Syracuse has lost 10 of 11 against the Wolfpack and last year a loss at NC State, 33-25. Well, Syracuse's job is clear here. Must get a stop to give DeVito or Dungey, whoever's a quarterback, an opportunity. Going to go Wildcat right here, Tom. Right, Williams. 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 Yep. He'll throw it. Incomplete. Off the fingertips of Carl Tucker. Boy, Carl Tucker has to know that you just have to catch the ball. It's not about running at this point. Although, if he catches this and runs, he may score. Look out. There's no Syracuse defender anywhere in the Nobody in the zip code. You just have to gear down and catch it. Even if you're falling to the ground, catch the ball. I mean, you might be complaining about Rattles Williams' throw. He's a receiver. What do you want? Just get it on the guy. He did. You got to catch that ball. 2.13 to go. Johnson is the deep man. Lent putting. Johnson fair catch at the 41 and a half yard line. 42 yards on the punt. And the Orange with some life with 2.07 to go. Boy, it looks like DeVito. They've turned it over to the freshman DeVito at quarterback. DeVito was in on the last series. The Orange were knocking on the door, had fourth down, and were incomplete on their attempt in the back corner of the end zone. Well, so often it's 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 a little easier to come into the game when you come when you come in and your team struggle a little bit offensively as a backup, but that's certainly when DeVito's coming in, so you like his chances. His first pass on the previous series, 50 yards to Custis. This one behind a twisting Taj Harris. Now the ball just too tall and a little bit behind. Running the post route. Oh yeah, he's open on the post route and the ball just too tall. This kid's got a big arm, you can see it. Gotta complete some passes. And you don't need it all right now. They need to get a first down if you're Syracuse. Wiley, there's your first down for the orange. Chains are moving. Morris in the tackle. I've got 15 yards on that play to Riley. And if you're DeVito now, a lot of time in the game. Over a minute and a half left in the game, so you got a lot of time. Actually, 150 in the clock winding. DeVito from midfield. Going deep near the end zone. It's caught. And a touchdown. Nikeem Johnson makes the catch for the Orange.
Dino Babers trying to get all his players back to the sideline. Don't need a penalty or anything like that. But you can understand some frustrations. And now the, the biggest play of all. Got to find a way to push it through to tie the game. Schmidt to tie it. It is good. 27 all with 139 to go in the dome. Heels and orange. How about Tommy DeVito comes off slinging darts from the sideline. Look at this throw. Set his feet. And I'm going to take a shot down the field of my talented sophomore, Nakeem Johnson. And it's right on the money. Right down the chimney shoot to the sophomore wide receiver. And we're all tied up. Wow. And that's against Trey Morrison, who's played extremely well today for North Carolina. DeVito, 7 of 10, 129 yards, and two deep shots, including that one, to Nakeem Johnson to tie the football game up. The sophomore from Washington, D.C., his second TD catch of the season. DeVito, his second TD toss, had one of the win against Florida State here at the Dome earlier this season. And he goes deep to Johnson. We are tied. 27 all, 139 on the clock. No return from Ratliff Williams, the deep man for North Carolina. Here's our Dickies hardest working player for North Carolina going to be Miles Dorn Dave with the 12 tackles in that secondary for the heels. Yeah John Papuchis the defensive coordinator had Dorn up in the box a ton to defend against the Syracuse run and Dungey running with the football 12 tackles nine of those all by himself outstanding day for the safety. Elliott complete. 30-yard line. Antonio Williams for five yards. One timeout for the Heels to work with. Uh, these are the times as a quarterback you practice and you think about and want to be in. Eight men in the coverage. Incomplete. Now, one reason why you probably are seeing Williams and now Brown in the game is they're a little bit bigger running backs from a protection standpoint. But I think you could throw caution to the win here and you can get Carter back in the game because they're only they're dropping eight into coverage and playing a prevent defense. Only three man pass rush. Third down incomplete by Elliott. Looking over the middle. Well, that's the last thing you want to do was put the hot Tommy DeVito back on the field. But a three and out for North Carolina. Dave, we told you that the teams have not met since 2003. That was a win for Syracuse at North Carolina in triple overtime, 49 to 47. The fifth meeting between the programs is down to the final 114 and tied at 27. North Carolina has taken its final time out of the half. And all of a sudden, Tom, a building that's been dead most of the day here on homecoming has come alive. Coming a season ago, the Orange beat Pittsburgh in a close one, 27 to 24, to stop a four-game losing streak on homecoming. There were a lot of fans in this building that maybe thought it was going to be a loss for Syracuse, which had lost two in a row, very tight games for the Orange against Pittsburgh and Clemson. In fact, both of these teams trying to stop two-game losing streaks and were tied at 27. Amazing second half of college football. Riley to return this punt. 
as Lent gets it away. And Riley's going to stay away as it goes out of bounds. The last time Tommy DeVito touched the football, he did this. Set your feet and throw it, young man, and find Nakeem Johnson for a 42-yard touchdown. That's tied the football game. And Tommy DeVito back on the field. He had a long visit with Dino Babers. You take a look at his numbers so far today. But he had a long visit with Dino Babers while North Carolina had the football. Going over sequence, going over the thoughts of how aggressive do you want me to be? Those type of things as he went over it with his redshirt freshman quarterback. So DeVito came in a couple of offensive series ago for the Orange. He wants to go deep again. Riley can't track it down middle of the field. Boy, this kid has just come in and slinging it, man. I'm telling you, taking shots down the field. And you got Riley matched up on Holcomb, the linebacker. He stepped, maybe grabbed his shoulder pad just for a moment. Might have been able to flag that, but, boy, you like that matchup. You got Riley is that third inside receiver in the slot right here working against the linebacker. Riley 5'8", 170 pounds, but this one comes the other way to Harris, who steps out of bounds at the 40, first down orange. And smart by Harris, another freshman steps out of bounds. Well-schooled, get out of bounds, even though the clock stops with the, with, the, with the first down, you still get the clock stopped and you can operate at the pace you want to. DeVito, intercepted! Patrice Rene intercepts Tommy DeVito. Tommy bluffs the blitz. DeVito thinks he's coming, and Rene doesn't come. He stays back and intercepts the pass. You're going to see it. Rene, Patrice Rene baits him into the throw. And it's just Rene's to the left. Now, you're not going to see it in that look, but he just elevates and bats it down. Patrice Rene shows him early that he's coming, so DeVito makes up his mind that he's going to throw the side adjust. Second interception of the season for Patrice Rene. First interception for Tommy DeVito. Elliott, his pass. To Ratliff Williams incomplete. Tommy, here's the play right here. Take a look right here. Here's Rene. He's going to creep in and then he's going to stop. See, he looks like he's coming now. He stops. He baits the quarterback into thinking, I'm coming on corner blitz. Your side adjustment as a quarterback, if you've got a corner fire, is the throw behind him to the receiver. Nice play by Patrice Rene to kind of bait Tommy DeVito into a throw that he intercepts. Been a career day for Elliott. 317 yards passing. Wants to add to the total. Elliott looking for Ratliff Williams. And he's well defended in that orange secondary by Melifonwu, the redshirt freshman. Now you might wonder, okay, what is going on here? And I am. Why are you not running the ball? Syracuse has no timeouts. But you trying to get into field goal range. You could run the football and maybe get yourself in a field goal situation. Of course, North Carolina, what am I thinking? North Carolina out of timeouts as well, so that's my bet. Seven of 20 on third down from just inside the Orange 40. Third and 10, North Carolina. Elliott wanted to take off. There's nothing there. No gain on the play for Elliott. Ran into Andrew Armstrong, the junior from Youngstown, Ohio. Now they're going to bleed all the you know, bleed the clock if you want to here if you're North Carolina and take a fourth down throw. The field goal right here would be 57, 58 yards. North Carolina, Dave, does not have to snap the football. No, they will, though, on fourth down. you got to take one more shot to get a first down. Trying to go deep. Ratliff Williams incomplete. There's two seconds left on the clock now. How about this helter skelter play at <laughs> the back end? Neither team can get a completion when they need one. Excellent play. Melifonwu again goes up the ladder to bat away with the right hand. A couple of plays by that young man on that sequence for North Carolina offensively. Well, I think we know DeVito has a big arm now, and I, I would be willing to bet that you're going to try to sling this one as far as you can down the field. The 
ball is spotted at the 40 yard line. We saw DeVito in warm up today, Dave, and he could put some zip and distance on that football, no question about it. Well, some teams off the defensive like to put a big player in in the back end, and they will. North Carolina going to put DJ Ford in the game, who's a safety. Back in the back end. I see North Carolina's got three players back here. You can't even see one of them. DJ Ford, a 6-3 safety. DeVito. And that ball is knocked to the turf. So nothing happens in the final two seconds. And we're going to overtime. End of regulation. Orange, North Carolina. It is the second time in three weeks. We had them a couple of weeks ago. And they went to OT with Pittsburgh and lost that one to the Panthers. First time for Carolina to go to OT this season. We're going to play extra periods. In extra periods, each team will get a possession from the 25-yard line. There will be one timeout per extra period. Timeouts do not carry over. Carolina, you will call the coin toss as a division team. Your choices are offense, defense, or into the field. What is your choice? Defense. His choice is defense. Heads or tails? Oh, oh man. Tails. 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 Wow. It is tails. You've won the coin toss. Offense, defense, or in the field? Defense. He's going to choose defense. Which end of the field are you going to play on? Which end of the field are you going to play on? Carolina won the coin toss and chose to be on defense. Syracuse first down going that way. Yeah, it was, that was not administrated the best. You could probably do it, but uh, we got to a guy, one team having the football and one not. I think we knew we were going to be there, right, Dave, <laughs> in overtime? <laughs> anyway, what you want to do is you'd like to go on. The, the presiding feeling is you'd like to be defense first. You'd like to see what the other team does, and then you can counter off of that. Obviously, it depends on it determines how aggressive you are offensively. If the other team doesn't score at all, you're going you're gonna to play a little bit more conservative. So what North Carolina is going to get the opportunity to do is they're going to have the opportunity to go on defense, and they're going to see what Syracuse can do, and then at that point they answer. So Syracuse total offense, Dave, in regulation, 496 yards, and that includes our game-tying touchdown of 42 yards by Tommy DeVito to Nikeem Johnson. North Carolina, other side of the field, 481 yards of total offense. Yeah, really solid performance, and you've had some defensive plays, too. Even with all those numbers, we've seen some takeaways on both sides by both teams that have created opportunities for them to be in this game here 27-27 in the fourth quarter, or in the overtime. Each team... The two turnovers, that most recent one by Patrice Rene intercepting Tommy DeVito. And both field goal kickers have not been accurate today as well. Both have missed field goals. Three missed field goals on the day by the two kickers. So how comfortable are you as a head coach? Schmidt for the Orange, two of three on field goal attempts. To the end zone for DeVito, and it's incomplete. Nikeem Johnson, he's the one who made that grab of 42 yards to get us here to OT. Well, DeVito, DeVito's come in slinging a rock down the field. That one a little bit too long for Johnson to track down. Pretty good coverage, too, by Dorn. And you think he's open, but Dorn, the safety, was in pretty good leverage position coming over the top. 143 yards passing for DeVito coming in late in the fourth quarter. He tries the other side of the end zone for DeVito. It is a touchdown for the Orange. Jamal Custis on the business end in overtime. Working against Greg Ross one on one and just throw the jump ball to the 6 5 wide receiver. Why not? Good job of Custis going up and squeezing it, trying to high point it. And really pretty good coverage by Ross as well. He's right there. But just a good job of putting the ball on the big receiver and then Custis making the play when given the opportunity. Now these become so important now, knowing the other team's going to touch the football. You got to pound it through. Richard freshman Andre Schmidt. 34 27. DeVito, second TD pass of the game and third of the season. Flag on the play. He got a roughing the kicker call, I believe, against North Carolina. D 
Dino's probably going to ask him, can you put it on, on the end of the play so they have to go from the 40-yard line? <laughs> That's probably what he said to him. Running to the kicker, defense. <laughs> that penalty is declined. As all the plays, the traffic one is good. So, immediate answer for Syracuse and DeVito to Custis. Boy, how about a spark? You talk about a guy that sparks you. When you when you put your backup quarterback in, you're looking for a spark. You want somebody to, to rattle the cages and get yourself going offensively. It's stagnant. We showed you the drives in the second half, and they've not been able to amount it to anything. Well, DeVito comes in and lights a fire in his offense. Seven catches for Custis, a career high, 162 yards receiving. Just shy of his career high of 168. Elliott, just one of his last seven pass attempts. Getting the freshman safety out, Cisco, getting Cordy back in, the senior. Is Syracuse there? Elliott's pass complete and stopped almost immediately at the 30. Melifon Wu making the tackle and a loss of five on Jordan Brown. Tom, how good has he been? Melifon Wu is forced into action because of the injury to Frederick, and he's been outstanding on the corner. Second and ten for Carolina in overtime, trailing 34-27 to Syracuse. Daz Newsom right there. That's their big play guy. Play clock down to three. They just get it away with one second left. Antonio Williams. Williams, the move near the 10. And a first down, North Carolina. Tom, they use Daz Newsom to pull coverage that direction. Newsom goes that way. They're coming with, with pressure from McCord, from Cordy, the safety, and there's nobody home on the backside. They actually blitz their way right out of the play. Did Syracuse? Cordy coming on the blitz, the safety. 19 yards of the run by Williams. He'll get it again and plow into the line, get inside the 10-yard line. Antonio Williams met by Foster and Coleman. Yeah, good play one on one by Foster against the big back Williams. And now you got to be creative if you're, if you're Chris Kapilovic. You see, Larry's in conversation with Chris on the on the headset talking about what he wants to do. North Carolina seeking its first road win of the season. Need to respond to the orange and they do it. North Carolina scores. Bo Corrales over the middle. Nine yards and a heels touchdown. Yeah, run pass option. Fake the run game. Draw the defenders in with the run and throw right over the top to Corrales for the touchdown. Watch the defenders close here on the play fake. Everybody up in the line. Throw in behind them to Corrales for the touchdown. Corrales just can't win too early, meaning he's got to make it a good route. If he just run in there, the corner could have followed him inside. Extra point to send us to double OT. Freeman Jones sends us to our second OT. ACC for Corrales with the catch from Nathan Elliott with his second TD toss of the game and the first TD of the season for Corrales. Fourth in his career, double OT, Dave Archer. Yeah, Tom came in with just two catches on the year. Corrales has played a huge role in the game. So by rule, North Carolina gets it right back. And we play in our second overtime. 34 all. First foray into OT this season for North Carolina. Second straight game for Syracuse to go to OT. Elliott has plenty of time. Ratliff Williams extending but missing it. Boy, excellent protection initially. Now Robinson gets a hit on Elliott, and Elliott feeling a little bit, but does a good job here. Took a big shot from Robinson down the middle. Took a shot right down the pipe to Ratliff Williams. Exceptional, yeah, exceptional effort by Ratliff Williams, but he is shaken up on the play. It looks like he bangs his head on the ground here, Tom, a little bit. Kind of got rolled up with the defender rolling over the top of him. Melifonwu again in on the defensive play.
So as we play in double overtime, here's the game summary. Nathan Elliott, career highs in completions and passing, and Tommy DeVito comes in to throw two touchdown passes, one at the end of regulation to get us the Yeah, you look for a spark if you go to your backup quarterback, especially if you're going to sit down on the all-time great quarterbacks here at Syracuse and Eric Dungy. But DeVito has been that spark. Two touchdown passes. He did throw the one interception, but uh, been outstanding coming in on the relief. Here's DeVito in the first overtime. Finds his big receiver, Custis, the 6'5 wide receiver, goes over the top of Greg Ross for the catch. And then Corrales on the run pass option wins to the inside. Good play fake by Elliott. And put it on Corrales, the sophomore. Good to see Anthony Ratliff Williams up, moving to the sideline for North Carolina. This has been a hard fought game, both physically and emotionally. These two teams, both teams have struggled. Tom, they've been uh, beaten the last couple times out. But look at DeVito going over things with, with Dino Babers there, much like they did right at the end of regulation. They had a long conversation. Okay, talk to me about what you're seeing. Tell me where you'd like us to go. Second and 10 for North Carolina from the 25. Rontavius Groves has come in for Ratliff Williams. He's at the bottom of your screen. Elliott, incomplete. Looks like both teams might have had a chance at that as Whitner was back there, the senior for the Orange. Scoot Bradshaw is near the goal line, and he is still down. Boy, Whitner has a chance to end the football game right there. In, in Syracuse, again, with an opportunity to get the football, with all he had to do is score. Scoot Bradshaw, the starting corner. 18th start. He's been solid on the outside. Training staff out to attend to Scoot Bradshaw, junior from Tampa, Florida. What a homecoming game this has been here at Syracuse University. Tommy told us the last two times these teams got together was triple OT. That triple OT day was in 2003. That was at North Carolina. Won by Syracuse 49-47. They also played in 02, and that was a win by North Carolina at the Dome, Dave, in that one, 30-22. to The visiting team has won every meeting. That was only been four, but the visiting team has won all of them. Well, this crowd came alive, and Tommy DeVito lit a fire in him, and the defense is trying to keep North Carolina off the scoreboard here in the second overtime. Now, Scoop Bradshaw out of the game. So now you begin to look, okay, where am I looking to go? You've got a freshman at the bottom of the screen at corner right down here. A sophomore, Melifonwu, has played out of this world at the top, but only three-man rush looking to drop eight into coverage here on third and long. Ratliff Williams has come back into the game for North Carolina. Pass complete near the 20 as Elliott was falling down to Williams. But that's Coleman? short of a first down, only four yards. Yeah, Tom, how about Coleman in a three-man pass rush puts heat on the quarterback? You'd like to think you're going to have time to throw it with a three-man rush, but Coleman coming right here gets around the quarterback and makes Elliott drop the ball off. Now, Elliott, give Elliott credit. He got about four yards on the play. They're going to take a look to see if he was out. He was down on this play before he let it go. But give Elliott credit trying, trying to get four yards on the play. Let's see if he's down before the ball comes out of his hand. Not going to be able to see it there. See here if we can get a look here. I think he's up off the ground as he lets it go. Oh, no, he was not. Right knee is on the ground. And that's going to come back not only to the line of scrimmage, it's going to come back where he was down in the backfield. So that's going to make this field goal about eight yards longer. Trey Blake. The passes knee was down prior to throwing the pass. The Carolina ball, fourth down at the 31 yard line. All right, Tom, think about that now. The ball was at the 21 with the completion. Now you're moving it back to the 31. And of course, last time North Carolina had it, it was a poor snap, which bothered Freeman Jones, and he hooked the kick. Jones is two for four. He's made him from 34 and 25 yards away. The one we just showed you was from 45 yards away, and a miss for Jones. This from 48 yards in the second OT, Freeman Jones. 
It is just inside the pipe, and good for Jones. A well, good clean operation. Snap, hold, put the ball down, and Jones pounds it through. And that, that, that kick, had the completion stood, would have been 10 yards less than this one was, but hey, Freeman Jones is true, and he had more than enough leg to beat this through from 48 yards. Snuck it in on that left side. So Jones now five of eight from 40 yards or more this season. That one, a big one to put North Carolina up 37-34. As now the Orange will have their turn on offense in our second overtime. If there is a turnover, North Carolina would win the game. If they can produce a turnover somehow, that would end the football game. From the 25, first and 10. DeVito, complete, Johnson. A good quick nine yards on the play, Tom, to Johnson. Now, Carolina fan had a loose. Conversely, Dave, Syracuse goes in the end zone. Those would be the winning points in double overtime. Carolina showing zone coverage. Second and one. Incomplete. Now, DeVito rushed that a little bit. I didn't think he needed to let that. He's got zone coverage, and they're not under pressure. He's trying to get the ball out on time, but that went a little bit too quick. He'll toss it. Strickland barrels through a man at the seven, and Strickland down to the five. Tackle by Smith. First and goal, Orange. Ten yards on the run. Dante Strickland. Yeah, good hard running by Strickland. Go to the option play. Nobody home to take the back, and then Strickland's going to finish physically against Dorn. Push it down to the six-yard line. DeVito. Shotgun for the orange first and goal DeVito's got it tries to make a cut at the five and put the shoulder down into miles Dorn boy nice play by Dorn That's his what 12th or 13th tackle on the day for Dorn does a nice job of covering up the quarterback in the zone read Not as elusive or as physical a runner is Eric Dungey Tommy DeVito came into the game late in the fourth quarter through the game tying touchdown to Nakeem Johnson and an overtime TD pass of 25 yards to Jamal Custis. Second and goal. DeVito to the end zone. Touchdown. Ravian Pierce. The winning points in double overtime for the Orange. Ravian Pierce gonna slip right through the middle of the line for the touchdown. And only six catches on the year, had four touchdown receptions a year ago. But just a good job of play faking and get Pierce the football. I want you to take a look at this where he comes from. He's right here. He's gonna slip through on the zone read and get right there. North Carolina gonna commit to stop the run. Look at all the players come up to stop the run for North Carolina. Pierce slips right in behind him. And a big time throw and catch to win the football game. Third TD grab of the season for Ravy and Pierce. Third TD in the game by Tommy DeVito. 40-37 orange in double overtime. <laughs> 